there's a vixen, uh, white, uh, lean and mean, stalking through the snow uh, ever so softly uh, to an unguarded nest. She like fills her mouth expertly with two speckled eggs uh, and turns away trotting swiftly uh, in a triumph. She stops in her tracks and like turns up to sniff the wind, but it's behind her, obscuring the deadly scent of man beyond. She eyes back to the path and trots on swifter again. <laughs> Arrow takes her in the side and with a slightest yell, she slips free of the eggs and falls, tries to rise and then lays back in the snow, panting. She bleeds out and breathes her last by the time you approach your kill, Tanaka. And like many nights previously, you and your siblings won't go hungry. Yeah, Tanaka will uh, reach down to pick up the uh, the eggs, check them for cracks before putting them securely away in a, a comfortable pouch and uh, pull his arrow free from the, the vixen, picking it up, putting it over his shoulders and he'll glance around at this uh, frozen landscape. And give a deep sigh before heading back. Back at camp, Stan, I peel away the last like rough wool uh, and greasy like salve uh, from the throat of your brother, and you can speak with like this rasping whistle uh, of a croak. Uh, from like the slash mark and notches of scarred tissue around your throat, Chaloon. There's not been much talking the last two days since you came down from the rock anyway. Left Kortu, Bride of Khans, up there for the eagles. And the grey wolf, hungry, Turankai, howled for days as he could not get to her. You've not seen him for a couple of days since. And the horse meets... Uh, has dwindled and what's left uh, is rotted uh, and hard as rock. You hear the footfalls uh, of one of your brothers approaching and see that it's Tanaka, something in his hand. I feel some relief uh, knowing that he wouldn't come back with nothing. Uh, and I look over my shoulder and see See that it's not particularly juicy. It's going to be stringy, uh, but it's something. Uh, I won't talk because it's bad for my voice, uh, of which there's little. Uh, so I'll just give him a look uh, and give him a nod. The nod is returned to say the uh, the game is put down beside you, and uh, Tanaka will go about uh, starting to clean the kill. Uh, ever so often given a, a glance up. Yeah, two of is... Go ahead. The wound is looking better. You might even be able to talk within a fortnight. He'll nod uh, and then he'll like squat down um, next to Tanaka and help with like the skinning and the uh, butchering. Cut on. You found a glade uh, where there's like skeletons of trees poke out uh, amongst the extreme landscape. And you can see here uh, roots uh, frozen, like covered in frost. Uh, beneath like the earth that you've upturned, uh, digging hopefully like many other times and coming up with nothing. This time you can break off like uh, edible roots um, to boil uh, and gnaw on. You've got your knife out shearing, uh, shearing them off and you've got three of these like long frozen things put into the uh, horse hide bag uh, slung over your back when something in the snow moves uh, beneath you and like causes you to recoil. There's a moment of stillness, but then it writhes again, and this old black bony hand thrusts up out of the snow, 
uh, reaching for you. It stops an inch or so uh, from your mouth agape uh, before it's kind of like clink in place by this rusted uh, chain, uh, which like rips up like drift of snow and shows itself to be chained uh, to one of the nearby trees beyond. This rotted head, some leering uh, mouth just like pours out of the snow towards you, uh, trying to like bite and clasp with another skeletal hand. Uh, but the chain like holds it in place. It riles against it, reaching for you, uh, gasping in undeath. Do we lose guys? Sorry. Um, Karen, Karen jumps back, dances back out of range from of this great, um, grasping claws, looking down at the floor in horror. And then as he gets back beyond range of the chain, he he doesn't want to appear f afraid in front of his brothers and he's curious he looks around to see if there are any other f signs of anything else um buried in the ground here it's just the one thing that's like crawled up out of the snow chain to the tree beyond from where these like pilfered roots were uh, looking around see the side you can see no sign of your like brothers on the hunt does the does the chain look strong? The tree looks strong. The tree looks stronger than the chain, but the chain looks strong enough to hold from what you can see of it. It's rusted and frozen, and despite how the thing like uh, like appeals to your flesh, uh, the chain denies it. And where it's sort of torn out of the earth, come out of the earth. Can I see any more signs of those roots that I've I found? The edible roots. Yeah, like a, a vein uh, of the of the trunk, like of the root of the plant. Uh, this thing has kind of crumpled down, been covered by layers of snow, and sprung up from that kind of uh, grave uh, at you. So, like. The soil around it uh, would just like be molded with cloth, and like where it's like this thing's been laying, there are roots uh, beneath it. You would assume. You look hungrier than I do. I spit at it. You look even hungrier than Chulun. Um, I'll dance round, sort of um, making it move. Does it carry on? If it's carrying on lunging at me, I'll try and sort of. Are there any other trees or anything else to get the chain caught up on uh, around here? Uh, none like, that are closer to this thing than you. So, not that you'd be able to tangle it up in, but you could, I guess, go like one way around the tree and lure it to follow you, and it would coil itself up. That's what but I'll try and do. I'll try and. I'll try and spiral around the tree or circle around the tree, getting it, seeing if it gets caught up um, shorter and shorter on the tr tr on the chain, taunting it and um, but staying out of range. Yeah, it calls itself uh, about and then uh, puts its body at an unholy angle, uh, like reaching around by the pull of the chain. You hear a savage like crack as its shoulder uh, like dislocates. And the fabric that served as this horror shirt like rips along with it and it tears free of the tree and lunges at you with one uh, good hand. Roll initiative. Damn. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, so... What was your initiative, Karan? 
It is 16. So what do you do? Um, a little surprise as it breaks free. I... Um, I'll just try scampering away, try and keep out of range of it. Run away, get out of its range. Move my full distance and a full dash. And and I've got extra, um, as a bonus, I can um, dash as well. So I'm moving that far away from it. Turning and running, seeing if it follows me. Yeah, it follows you uh, for sure. Uh, somehow, though, it seems to be like missing the top half of its head and is eyeless. Uh, though jaw clattering, like stumbles down the snow drift, like after you. That you quickly outpace it, uh, even if you weren't exerting yourself. So it grows smaller in the distance as you sprint. Is it, looking around? Are there any cliffs that I can climb down, or or anything like that around here? Not cliffs. You've come down out of the Red Hills and travelled north on the plains. Uh, so there'll be like the dead trees or like low foothills, uh, ravines and such, but I don't think there'd be cliffs. Is it still dragging any of the branch or, or not? Uh, no, it's just like a, a human like corpse rotted away to a mostly skeleton clad in hide and rags uh, that was like chained there but the chain arm is still on the tree. Uh, so it's not dragging oh. anything, but it's like horrid oh, it's got carcass. Chain armor. No, no, it had a chain connecting oh, okay. it to the tree. It's not wearing chain armor. Does it look sort of scurrying away, keeping out of its range, but looking back at it, does it look, um, does it look like it's um, from the, from the endless plains, does it look like it's wearing clothes similar to to ours? Or um... yeah, it looks like a rotted Tugan man. Like the hides and furs are not too like dissimilar, and nearly as like uh, yours are nearly as putrid and stinking as as its. But it's like a similar cultural garb, if that's what you mean. Yep, yep. Uh, there it goes. The guy is curse. Can you hear me again? Yep. Oh, sorry. Um, yep, I'll. I'll make my way back towards the others. Um, no, I'll... <sighs> yes, I'll make my way back towards the others, leading it. Stopping every so often for it to like, to, in a way to like lure it or keep it on your trail uh, or, or simply to flee from it and uh, outpace yourself from it. To lure it back, to lure it back okay. towards the others. And I'll call <laughs> okay. them loudly before I get close to the camp. So oh. I guess the silent wonder that your siblings share of like, where's Kadan? He should be back from the hunt by now uh, is answered in the distance. You like faint calls could be heard uh, by your brothers and sister.
And yeah, and you guys stop from cooking the, uh, like roasting the uh, vixen and, and like scraping her hide to hear, ah, Tanaka, Chulun, Sanai. Look what I found. Jim would just like look up. He's unable to speak, but he would just like have wild eyes. Like we should do something. Uh, and he would stand. Yeah, I think Tanaka would stand there soon after uh, and then reach for his bow. I found, I found something that's hungrier than we are. Let's go. Uh, and children would like to start running uh, towards Kadan. As you run towards him, so you see a thing, uh, like a dead man, a skeleton nearly tumble uh, from some like leafless brambles behind and come like skittering uh, down the snowy trail uh, behind your younger brother, slower and cumbersome uh, and without the top half of its head, unseeing but still following its prey. If it looks like it's chasing uh, Kadan, I'll just like run up to it and try and like uh, tackle it down to the ground. Okay, roll initiative. Yep. The rest of us as well? Because I'm following him. I'll ready an attack, so when when it's distracted, I'll lunge in as well. And chill and see, like, sprint up to this thing and tackle it, uh, make opposed athletics. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, that will be 15. Yeah, you do so, like, bulging into it, knocking it, scattering to the ground, covered in its reek now. Yeah, he'll, like, uh, as he's running, like, duck down low at the last second and, like, ram his shoulders uh, into its knees and knock it to the ground. Uh, and then just like look and like smell and realize uh, he's done it again, just like charged in without thinking. Um, but at least Kadan uh, should be able to run away. That's it for me. Sanai. Sanai is following close behind Chaloon. Um, and she's got this unwieldy blade, the one from the raid that feels like it was ages ago. Uh, will a 15 hit it? Yeah, well, cuts in through like bone and rotted hide. Yeah, she, it's just kind of swinging blindly. Um, probably hits somewhere near the ribs. She has no ability to properly aim it. Uh, that is four damage. Okay. Yeah, you hack into the corpse and a bit of it flies off, but it doesn't seem to like stop its uh, vicious uh, like attempt to withstand uh, your brother. He dives in, bringing it low. It still writhes despite the blade strike. Uh, is there anything else you'll do, Sano? No, I I think now that she's close and she can just make it out in the in the dim lighting, her face just goes white seeing this horrific thing that might have been a person. Tanaka, as you like step out of the uh, like the hide lean to uh, that you'd uh, been camped in, red uh, to the elbow with vixen blood, you see uh, like down the rise, uh, your siblings turn on this like undead thing and chew and uh, drive it into the snow, uh, Asana cutting at it. Uh, quickly uh, grabbing the the bow, and I'd, I'd imagine if he only has time to grab maybe two or three arrows, I'll roll for it in a moment. Um, he rushes forward. How 
close can he get to this thing? Uh, I'm going to say you're about 60 feet away from where uh, Cullen had lured it to you guys. Uh, so if your movement's 30, you could halve the distance between you and it currently. Oh, it's prone uh, in the snow with your brother. Um, I, I will, I will take the dash action rather than if that's possible, okay. rather than do anything else. Okay, so just sprint up to join Sane uh, Chalun. Yep. Cut on. Cut on. Um, jumps forward, stabbing at it, and um, but. Slightly misses. He's trying to cut it across the neck, but he gets it across the shoulder for four points damage and then dances back out of range, um, trying to. Yeah, dances back out of range. Okay, it's going to rise up out of the snow, uh, grappling with you, uh, Chulun, uh, and try and rake down your face uh, with its rotted claws for a crit. Oh no. Uh oh. Ten slashing damage. Uh, are we doing sister shock? Uh, no, uh, but crit table. Oh god. I'll s I prefer the first. <laughs> the one where you have like a one in ten chance of just dying. <laughs> what do we need to roll? Uh, I'm just loading it up now. Uh, it's a D10 uh, first. Dark balls, zero. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> uh, roll a D10. God. Uh, yeah, you'll suffer. Uh, actually, I'm just, yeah, nothing happens at the moment. <laughs> uh, it just like rakes its uh, claw down your face, like blood spurting from it, like yeah, half like blinding you. Um, as it, yeah, like stands up uh, in the snow, uh, despite reality. Yeah, he'll just say uh, this like raspy, like, ah! but he's unable to scream because uh, his voice doesn't exist. Uh, Chun, your turn to act. Okay, uh, I'm going to punch and kick this thing as many times as I can. So I'm going to hit it and then do flurry of blows to hit it two more times. Uh, first one's a 18. That hits. Second one's also an 18. That Third hits. one is even higher, 17 okay. plus 5. Uh, so uh, it's gonna be eighteen damage from three hits. <laughs> describe describe how you destroy it. Oh wow! Um, so he like uh, it like rakes at him, and then he just like uh, grabs some of the exposed ribs and like uh, smashes an elbow into them, and there's like a <laughs> break, uh, and then he like. Uh, holds onto that broken rib and like steps on the the side of the knee, uh, which like breaks that as well. And then finally, he like take the head uh, and like smash it down towards his own knee, uh, and there'll be a crack again, and it'll hit the ground. Uh, but then immediately afterwards, so will Chulun. Uh, he'll like fall down into the ground onto his knees, like trying to rub the blood out of his eye. Is it bad? It looks dead. I mean, me. I can't tell. There's too much blood. Come, come back to the fire. I'll, I'll try and clean it up. Uh, yeah, he'll uh, stand up. Uh, though he doesn't want to leave this thing. Uh, he like looks down. Um, what if it gets back up? Not. Uh, Go ahead. Kadan will grab the chain that was attached to it and try dragging it. Uh, 
uh, Tanaka picks up uh, some of the snow and puts it uh, as a quite literally a kind of cold compress on Chulin uh, and turns around and sees the younger sibling dragging this thing through the snow. He'll look Where? around. He'll look. He'll be looking around for some um, for a tree or anything tall enough to sort of hang it from. Yeah, you can do so, and uh, it's limp and broken as you do, and does not like reanimate or like try to claw at you again. We should burn the thing. <laughs> That's a waste of fuel. But we don't have much. There's always more fire. Not here. We can take the bones and put them in different places. Hmm. Kata nods and starts, try, gets the big, big sword. If he still, I can't remember whether I still um, have it from from uh, our battle. That's off his back and starts chopping it up with that. Yeah, you can do so. Hack the bones to pieces and scatter them about. So guiding the children back to the the tent, is there anything that can be done for the wounds? Um, to kind of bind them up with the supplies that we have to make sure there's no in, uh, infection or anything that's going to get in there. Yeah, you can boil snow uh, and like see to the wounds, uh, the worst of the ones on children's face. The old warriors used to scar their own faces. Do I look tough? Maybe a little more than yesterday. Mostly it just looks like you ran into some nasty branches. He like had puffed himself up when you said the first thing. Like he was like, "Yes, I look like a warrior," and then he'll just like pout. I found these roots. He says, uh, pulling out some uh, tubers from his from his um, pouch. The thing was near them, and there may be more. I could go back and check. There's probably not two of these things. If there is, maybe you'll get some more scars, says um, Kadan, and sets off back the way he came. Chilon looks at Sarna and says, then I'll look tough. Mm -hmm. We can't let Kadan go alone. Should I go with him? Oh. Should not look at Tanaka. Uh, it's yeah. his call. Yeah, I don't think it Tanaka would um, allow his younger sister to go to go off in a potentially dangerous situation. I think he would. No, you stay here. Keep an eye on Joe and keep stirring in the stew. 
Stir Keep it stew. ready. Stir the stew, make the medicine. I promise I'm good in a fight. I'm not doubting that. It's not the fight I'm worried about. It's handling and he'll peer out the tent. It's handling him. I'd rather have a good stew than a good fight. Sinai pouts but sits down. And Tanaka will go with uh, Kadan. Is do these uh, tubers? Could I examine them as I walk after them? Yeah, they seem edible. Uh, you've probably eaten their like before. Uh, they may go well with the uh, vixen stew, uh, or keep uh, for longer. Um, and either end of where like Kadan's broken them off, like uh, pilfering them before, like the dead man work. Are like good, like the sides are uh, both are good, which would yeah so tell you there might be more of the roots. It doesn't take long uh, to follow uh, Tulan and the dead things trail back to its source, a uh, dead tree with the chain spiraled around it, holding a dead arm. Uh, as like the afternoon uh, breezes through. Um, the ground is like upturned uh, around it, and there's like an awful stink here. Uh, like of something dead. Uh, and moving close, uh, yeah, you can see like the the signs of like the struggle and such that are uh, that Kardan had explained to you. And there are indeed uh, twice as many roots and tubers as a uh, younger brother had already taken uh, that you'd be able to find digging up some snow and earth. Then. Filling his, uh, filling his, his bag again, his satchel with, um, with these plants. He then turns back and has a look. Chains are rare things, in, in these parts. I'd guess. Um, yep. I'll gingerly sort of um, go up and kick the. Uh, Kick the arm, see if it reacts. Nope. Then I'll um, cut it off and then inspect the chain. It's made of like a black metal. You've not seen its likeness before. It's obviously been here for some time. Uh, so to the tree uh, that it's chained to. Is there anything unusual about the tree? No. Uh, it, it would be the kind of tree that you've uh, seen before. Not so common in the Red Hills, but out, more on, out on the plains. Though this is probably the biggest one you've seen. There are more, though, uh, you noticed down the ridge and beyond where you'd intended to hunt before things got out of hand. <laughs> huh. And is is it sort of riveted to the anyway? I'll I'll get Round it. Round about and clasped, uh, but yeah, you can extract it with some uh, elbow grease, using yeah. like your blade to like wear away at the uh, like where it's bound around. I'll extract it and um, then hand it over to to Naka. As he's the sort of mini Khan of our mini um, tribe. Yeah, Nag will take it and he'll kind of uh, pull at it just to test the, the strength of the thing. And then uh, he'll wind it around his shoulder. And uh, continue uh, picking up the tubers, keeping one wary eye on Kadan. Shall we go and check the other trees? See if there are any other things buried underneath them. Uh, 
I would rather not. I think uh, if they're tied there, they slumber, and I, I do not wish to wake them. We have a good stew to eat. Joe and his woods to tend to. Uh. Kind of looks wistfully at the other trees, but f falls in behind Tanaka. Where are we going, Tanaka? Are we heading into the endless wastes or one of the other directions? He always likes trying to chat to Tanaka. Tanaka will uh, look about before responding. Um, he gazes up to the sky, looks along the no doubt endless horizon. Because he doesn't really have an answer. So we'll know when we get there. So you head back uh, down the snowdrifts uh, to your makeshift camp to the smell of uh, vixen stew. Uh, a horsehide sack uh, full of roots. And back into the warmth of the fire and the familiar smells of family. Yeah, Jill will be digging into uh, the stew earlier than he's supposed to. He'll be like working uh, on like snatching uh, bits uh, while it's being cooked and like burning his mouth. Then I can reach into the, the pouch of the eggs and hand one over to you. We're all hungry. But I'm bigger. So? I have to eat more. What's that? And he'll like point. Uh, and then huh? when Sonai looks away, he'll like reach in and grab another spoonful. And he'll like laugh, uh, but then begin uh, choking uh, from the pain. Yeah, the stringy stew is uh, warming and filling, uh, and uh, by the time any of you deign to look outside of the, uh, the lean-to again, uh, darkness uh, is coming uh, and near come, and the cold uh, worsens and deepens, though it's not snowing heavily like it has nights before since your exile, it will still be a cold night. Uh, children will like eat um, way too quickly and he'll be like finished his dinner long for anybody else and he'll just like look sort of longingly at everyone else's dinner uh, as he like sits uh, and tries to warm himself uh, by the fire. Kadan, once Chillan finishes, will be really slowly savouring his food and making a big fuss of enjoying it. Mm. Yeah, Chilin will be giving him the death glare. Uh, and then he'll, uh, seeing as he's finished, he'll like turn away from the fire and look out, um, taking like a watch. Do you think that thing was from the, uh, the city of the dead? He would nod. 
He was dead. Must be from there. But those were just stories. I, I, I can't be real. Can. <laughs> He was dead. Dead again. If we die out here, will we be like that? No. We'll go to the Sky Father. And then he'll start coughing uh, again. And then he'll like look at you and like shake his head like, I can't talk anymore. Tanaka, where, where are we going? Further north towards the Sea of Ice? Or east to the hold of the old guards or or west or do we wait for a sign Should we see like Sanaka uh, staring into his dinner and like walk over and give him a shove? Sorry, you button. Yeah, he's shoving me a look up from his stew. West. The hold of the old cans. Uh, sorry, that's the east, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. North lay is the sea of ice. West, the city of the dead. East, winter keep. Yeah, so the knacker would uh, say east. So the next morning you break your camp and under a light morning snow, uh, make your way by foot in a file together behind Tenoko, uh, heading off into the east. You travel like this for another two days and by then uh, the roots uh, and vixen uh, are gone and the going is tough once more. The end of that day, uh, as the western horizon drinks the sun, you can see uh, by its dying, foothills uh, looming uh, off to the east uh, and the next morning uh, you reach them. This place uh, is barren and desolate uh, as the endless plains uh, you'd pass through these last weeks. Though there is like some glib promise uh, of life uh, in the hills uh, as you like uh, reach them uh, for shelter at least uh, from the carving northern winds uh, and can find like game there amongst the rocks birds and marmots and you've been wondering uh, in these like foothills and amongst these crags like hunting and surviving and not met another soul uh, for many days uh, when one day uh, out hunting together you hear the sound of voices squabbling like a sharp argument on the wind words echoing and garbled but even if they were clear, uh, you would not know them. The tongue is foreign. The voices do not sound like the tarn. Kind of sends that automatic, uh, like adrenal spike through you and like sets you to kind of cower and look about as if expecting like spectres or phantoms. Juno would like look to Tanaka uh, and then to the rest. I think that's our remembrance of the 
the moment where the the banished men tried to steal our horses. Which was almost another lifetime ago. And I'll motion for everybody to kind of crouch down. Uh, but he's curious to see what the the uh, source of the the sound in the squabble. So you move towards the source of the sound and it grows uh, louder, like auroxes grunting uh, or gobbling at one another, or perhaps a demon. Thoughts rush through your mind as you get in closer uh, to the source of this sound and creep up over a snow rise uh, to look down what appears to be like a forested glade on the other side of like a ravine or gully. Uh, all the trees like look like they're made of water and frozen in place, like the path that cuts through like a stream that still is frozen and like signs of like birds in the trees or animals at graze frozen too. The only thing not frozen though, they look ice and these two monstrous demons lumbering about, garbling to each other uh, in their filth, horrid tongue. Uh, one like hits at the other and like shouts, sounds like rocks grinding, then it calls back uh, from a curse from the other. Uh, a tree behind them like smashes into ice and cinders and like scatters about uh, snowy glade. What do they look like? Their noses are long, eyes distended and like drooping out the sides of their head like dogs or calves born that you'd like put out of their misery. Their hands, if you can call them that, have three long appendages each tipped with like a blackened curved tip that like drag through the snow as they walk, squat legged but long body. Their like flesh looks like something mixed between a corpse's and some like frozen thing. And their mouths are like hideously uh, wide and show like gnarled uh, yellow boars like teeth. Uh, Trillin would like look at the others and like grateful that he can't speak, he would just like uh, do a gesture for them to like hide uh, in the snow. And Sarnai looks to you and then looks away back the way they've come, uh, eyes darting like, like an animal cornered. But she's still and doesn't run yet. Kadan is looking at them very excitedly, um, uh, but follows his brother's lead and looks around for, uh, uh, looks around for and spots a little um, sort of bump in the earth where there's shadow, and he just kind of falls flat into that and continues watching from there. The argument ends in like violence, but not in death. These things like squabble and hit at each other, smashing another tree uh, before like moving back into like some semblance of like a drunken patrol uh, or like stupor, uh, maybe is more apt, wondering about this frozen place, but more frozen than the other places and unreal cold. Would we be used to seeing things that aren't human, Nico? Like, yeah, your father would have dealt with deep folk like the dwarves okay. uh, and men as of strangers on the Goldway, but like the Chugan and Tana kind of one ethnic uh, people. Right. So you'd yeah, be familiar, familiar with other kinds of races and species, though definitely not these things. They're like, uh, yeah, monstrosities that you're, you wouldn't have come across in your life, like trolls. Okay. Like Chilun would just urge everybody to like not move and stay where we are, um, just like silently, like whatever about fighting one uh, half dead man, like this is well beyond them. So he would just like look at them, uh, and he himself is going to try and hide. Okay, uh, can I get each of you to make stealth checks?
Switzerland, like uh, can't see great with like the scar over his eye, and he like steps onto something, uh, and like lets it this like. Ugh! Yeah, one of the squabbling things like stops uh, the other and like turns about, like listening uh, on the wind, like turning its head from what looks like a melted ear hole, putting it towards way like in your direction, and then turning like uh, leveling its eyes against like the uh, snowy wind, and takes a few like cumbersome steps forward, uh, slowing up the ice and snow, and gives like a rumbled call in some like unknown language, uh, and points up with like a long gnarled finger uh, towards where you are, Chillin like trying to like get down behind the bow of a dead tree or like burrowed into like snow, like your brothers and sister uh, who have disappeared from view. Uh, but you like feel that kind of shock go through you as something uh, hostile, locks eyes, uh, locks gaze upon you. Uh, and when you like look up, uh, you, you, you know it, that it's seen you, that it's rushing towards you. The other is like calling angrily, uh, but will follow up the chase after its companion lumbers forward. How far are they and what's around us? You guys are on like a kind of a gully rise. So maybe something like 15 or 20 feet up on like a low rise that's like laden with snow. There's a couple of dead trees leaning over like the gully beyond. Uh, and then past those, this like ice and field, like a glade that was almost like it was doused in water and then frozen in that instant. And although like the wind and these like monsters move about it, the trees don't like sway to the breeze and like the snow doesn't shift. Hmm. There's no, uh, sorry, um, I'm just going to start running, um, because the only thing I can think to do, um, I'm fast, got 40 foot, uh, so I'm just going to, uh, see that, and I'm going to try and run away from where I think my siblings are, um, as fast as I can, which will be 80, uh, this round, uh, it's all I can think to do, he doesn't know, like, hiding isn't going to work, so he'll just, like, look, and see that it sees him and feel this like pit in his stomach and then just boom and like take off as quickly as he can. The snow shifts around you guys as you like lay hidden or like backed up uh, behind trees as this thing lumbers past, smashing like a, a frozen bramble uh, to pieces, uh, leaving chaos in its wake as it like beelines uh, for Chulun. Uh, but you have a head start on the thing and seem like slightly swifter than it as it like cumbersomely like shifts through like the deep snow, not kind of picking a path like you're doing, uh, just simply like making like a straight line, gouging up snow and earth uh, and rock alike uh, and just roars uh, as it like uh, lumbers after you. Is there any like, uh, there's no frozen water or anything around. Um, is there like a river bend or anything like that? Or is it literally we're in the plains still, right? Um, no, in foothills. Uh, so there's no rivers. It's fro everything. If they were, they'd be frozen over. Are there any that I can see that are frozen over? Or no? Yeah, the one down in the glade where the uh, trolls were, there was one. Okay. A stream that had frozen over. Did I see them walk across that? Yeah, uh, he gouged through that and came up the other side uh, okay. unaffected, it's seen by like the icy water that okay. would usually like doom something if it did yeah. that, if it fell in icy water. Right, that's what I would be thinking. Um, so then I'll just continue running um, kind of aimlessly, just knowing that if I stop and this thing catches me, I'm just dead. Um, I'm going to try and run like and try and lose it. I don't know if that's possible in the foothills, if there's like some trees or something or like some brush that I can like run through and then change direction. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to run. Okay. Um, give me an ath athletics check opposed for a chase. Okay. <laughs> uh, your DC is 26. I fail. That was a crit. This thing like just rips trees out of the way as you like pass between them trying to like, uh, you know, if you like you were chased by an elephant, you'd put like things between you and it so it can't get at you. This elephant just like busts through it unaffected by like ice and shards or like the snow, uh, like, wisping through its eyes and uh despite like the path you take to flee this predator uh it gains upon you um thrust it like up thrusting a tree and like throwing it down to shatter in the ground nearby to you you guys hidden in the snow behind the thing uh would see this the second one like follows up uh, to the edge of the uh, frozen stream of the glade that it was it still barking uh and like um yeah railing against its companion uh it doesn't seem to be following so far. 
almost as on its like perimeter. So it would be inside of you guys as well. It hasn't noticed. Neither of them noticed uh, anyone except for Chulun. Kadan is going to try and get to a position where he um, where he can throw a stone at at the one that's chasing his brother, and but he's close enough. Um, he'll be hidden and close enough to the other one for if the the first one sort of looks around, thinks it might think it's the first one. He's going to try and throw a stone from hidden and blame it on the first one. Do you see my plan? Uh-huh. So I'm going to try and sneak up to, to a good position to do that and then throw the stone. Okay, can I get an opposed athletics check? Uh, not opposed, but just against the Trolls DC to see if you can like maintain the chase with Chulun. What did you get for that check before, Lloyd? Uh, I got a 24, uh, but it oh, was okay. 19 on the die, but not a crit. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so DC 20 athletics check, uh, cut on, uh, to do as you say, to like move up, keep up. Oh, yeah, and then I actually rolled an acrobatics check. Uh, athletics would have been 21. Okay, cool. What was that, Kaius? 21 as well. Excellent. Yeah, so you like sprint off, like keeping uh, the second troll out of uh, line of sight by the curve of the gully, uh, herring after your brother, like picking up a good sized throwing stone uh, to hurl at the troll uh, from your hidden position. Um, should I make an attack? Yeah, actually, uh, first you should roll, we should roll initiative actually. Yeah, makes okay. sense. Uh, when Chulun failed the athletics check, the initiative should be rolled. Uh, 's yeah, so chillin uh, as you like turn uh, sprinting you look over your shoulder uh, for a moment and see the thing gaining on you and know uh, that whatever path you pick uh, it will like uh, chase you down as it's done so and it closes on you uh, beckoning a confrontation um and it's a, basically a giant, right? It's like over ten feet tall. I, I would, I would guess it's a control, right? Um, like a large horse re reared up on its hind legs is how big it is. Uh, there's just no way Chulun would like stand and fight. I don't think any human uh, in the right mind would. He's just gonna um, dash again, uh, so he'll move eighty feet uh, and like run away as fast as he can. Okay, Sanai. Sinai is lying flat, covered over with snow, um, a small opening, her only window, and she can't see what's happening. She hears this one nearby. She heard the noise of the other one taking off, and she can only imagine that it has run after one of her brothers, at least. Um, I think for now I'll hold my action uh, until I hear if somebody calls out. Because um, I don't think she has any clue really what's happening at the moment. Okay. Cut on. You've crept up on this monstrosity as it like turns leering, uh, and your brother he like quails in the face of the thing uh, and goes uh, to bolt uh, further back west. Oh, sorry. No, it's meant to be Tanaka first. Um, just what is the he's running to trees, so uh, 
as far as line of sight to this thing goes. You'd have to break your position uh, to move to gain light of sight uh, because you can't see it because uh, it's gone over like 80, 80 160 feet or more uh, through like rocky uh, terrain and over the other lip of the gully. The one that stands railing the other from like the frozen glade, uh, you can see from your position. Uh, they're not the one that chased after Chulin, not without moving. Yeah, no, he, no, he would he would break the line of sight um, and attempt to get into position to take a shot at the one that's threatening Chulin. Okay. Uh, it'd be uh, 18 to hit. That hits. For, I believe that's seven. Check. Yeah, seven damage. Okay. And to the back of this thing. Yeah, so it roars at you uh, as you elude it once more, Chulun, uh, sprinting away. And while it's like reared up, roaring, that's when the arrow thunk, of your brother like strikes into its back. It turns over its shoulder, looking off into the distance, leveling its eyes uh, to see you, Tanaka. Uh, and now it's Karan's turn. Swallowing a curse, Karan will just hide um, behind a tree or in a in a snow um, drift and wait to see how things progress since this arrow has landed his his plan isn't going to work yeah the thing uh turns about uh losing sight of chulun as he darts off through the trees and will turn lumbering 60 feet uh through the snow heading towards you tanaka uh, bawling as he goes like calling out in his fell language pointing a gnarled talon at you uh, rumbling past where you are, Kadan. Though that'll put him 140 feet uh, from you, uh, Tanaka. Uh, the other one just shouts. Uh, you can hear it off in the distance, its voice rumbling. Uh, Chulun, uh, darting 80 feet off further back uh, west around the ravine, you lose sight of the uh, troll, and the sound of its footfalls uh, would give you the indication that it's moving away from you now, that you can't see it. You'd like to detect that. Okay, um, hmm, uh, I guess he would hide uh, and like stay low, though he'd be immediately worried that it's going for his siblings. Um, so he would like stick his head up and like try and watch it, but like try not to be seen. I'll run a stealth uh, if you like. It's a 14. So he'll like try and stay low and like watch around and see. Um, but yeah. Yeah, so like move up, gain stealth, and try and spy what's happening. Uh, or simply just like flee uh, to where you were and that, like, like just hide pretty much where you got to at the start of your turn. Yeah, where I got to, because it, it sounded like it was okay. moving away, right? Uh, and then yep. I'll like stick my head up and see uh, where it is. Yeah, if it can like smell you or knows that you're still there, it doesn't seem to like have its attention on you anymore, it's turning. Uh, to like chase Tanaka off in the distance some ways from you. You can see one of his arrows sticking out of its back. Uh, and like beyond like where Tanaka stands is just below the lip of the um, ravine, which like down on the other side is that frozen glade that you guys had spied. Uh, but you can't see it from where you currently, ha currently have fled to. So Sane will be the next to act. Uh, can I hear the one coming back this direction? Yeah, it's hard it not to. Far? It's the loudest okay. thing, even at 140 feet. Yeah, she'll uh, stay put, but let out a, a low whistle, um, something they used to do to let each other know where they are and listen for a response. Tanaka, uh, your shot is hit and the thing is turned, losing sight of Chulun, and now lumbers back towards you. Uh, 
uh, seeing it coming this way uh, rather than towards uh, at least Chilone, um he's going to to run uh, in the direction that it so it is back would be to the rest of them or where he thinks they are uh, at the very least um, uh -huh. so it is they're out of its line of sight entirely um so he'll he'll actually he'll dash the 60 feet uh and lure it so the way direction from which two is run essentially yep and also away from its uh, companion in the frozen glade by way i reckon it ideally yes yeah. Spring off 60 feet from that location, they'll put you 200 feet away from the thing. It will kind of veer its course to kind of you know, try and uh, still pursue you. Uh, at least that's not noticed uh, any of your other siblings. Uh, cut on. You watch all this happening from your hidden spot. Oh, Karan doesn't know what to do now, Ugh. but his eyes are shining alive with excitement and he'll stalk from dune to dune after the thing, but not he's not trying to keep up, he's just watching from the distance. Okay, the troll will lumber after you, Tanaka, uh, closing the 60 feet, putting it at 140 from you again. Uh, the other one still not being able to see, just like calls out for an answer louder and angrier. Chalon. Okay, so they seem to have lost the track of me. Um, so I'm going to pop up from where I am. Um, are there any like rocks nearby or like things I could pick up from the snow that I could throw? Yeah, sure. You're in foothills. Uh, it's rocky here. Nice. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'll pick something up um, and I will... Oh, I don't even know if this is going to be helpful. Um, no, I'll pull the knife from my belt uh, and I'll run towards one of them. And my intent is to like, sneak up and try and like shove the knife into the back of its knee. Um, so I'll do so stealthily if I can. Um, but I can move 40 foot around. Uh, Okay, so, so currently it's 110 feet from you. Uh, so if you wanted to move after it, you could like move bonus action to get within 20 feet of it, right? And then next turn yep. stealth up to it. That's what I'll do, yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to like hear or notice you behind it if it's bellowing along chasing Tanaka who struck it with an arrow. Uh, so maybe, yeah, you're like just darting up from your hidden spot now chasing after the thing. Uh, closing <laughs> for better or worse, Sane. <laughs> Sane, having heard nothing from her brothers, uh, will sit up from the snow uh, and he see this chase happening uh, and see Chaloon following and Tanaka ahead uh, and stand up and run uh, towards them, after them. Uh, she doesn't see Kadan. She looks for him, but I think he's probably still hiding. Um, so I'm going to move that direction. Which direction is that? Sorry, towards the thing or towards Tanaka or Chulun? Yes. That to general Chulun. vicinity of those three. Okay. Um, so you're one for so 200 feet. So you get you about 140 feet away from the thing as you break cover of the snow, run down the side of the ravine and, and chase up to it. Okay. All right. Uh, Tanaka, when you look back of your shoulder, you can see that uh, Chulun and Sanai are both rushing towards the monster. At that, um, he prepares his, his ball in the uh, and an arrow uh, takes aim and takes a shot, hoping to at least focus its anger on him because um, he knows what's coming. Uh, 
that's not good. 13. Uh, it thunks into it, but only the tip. It hardly seems to penetrate the thing's thick hide. It lets out no yell of pain. You wonder if the if it did any damage at all. But yeah, it's a miss. Yeah. Uh, cut on. Um, seeing his kin closing in on the thing, he'll also close in, but he'll 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 continue using stealth. So he'll be moving um, with his bonus action. He'll move sixty feet total. Okay, that'll put you 50 feet from the troll. Uh, beyond you, you can see Chulin closing in on it. Yep. Can I get a stealth check from you? That's... Uh, um, sorry. 20. Yeah. It, does, it makes there's it gives you no indication that it knows that you're there like creeping up swiftly through the snow towards it uh, and so we'll keep moving towards Tanaka who's just shot it again uh, moving another 60 feet putting it 80 foot from you uh, Tanaka and making it now 80 feet from you Chulun okay <laughs> <laughs> and 130 feet from you cut on. <laughs> Is your brain falling out of your nose, isn't it, Nico? Yeah, it's hurting me. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, and that's it for my life. Oh, guy stays where he is. Chill on, you're up. Okay, so he's 80 feet from me now. Yep. Okay, I'll move 40. Uh, I don't want to run up to him and then stop because I can't do anything. Um, I'll just run uh, the 40. Um, and I'll ready an action that if he turns around and comes near me, I'll punch him. Okay. Uh, Sanai, it rushed 60 feet from 140, so it's 80 feet from you, Sanai. Sanai and her haste was not quiet, but she now sees Kadan and she sees Chulun and their, their stance and their uh, uh, careful foot placement behind this bellowing creature. Um, and so she will attempt to slow herself as she runs downhill and Probably going half speed, but double moving, so uh, full speed then. Yeah. Uh, with stealth to try and come up behind it as well, um, seeing Chaloon with a weapon drawn. Okay. So uh, like another 30, I guess. Can I get a stealth check from you? 11. Okay. Yeah, it spies you coming down the snow drift towards it and marks you as, a, as an enemy as well. Uh, but makes no move to go towards you yet. Uh, so if that's said, it puts you 50 feet from the thing. Uh, and my brain stretches further. Tanaka, you're up. Uh, Tanaka holds his ground and takes another uh, shot with his bow. Oops, and I've just done the call once. We're calling it now. Uh, that will be a 25. That hits. Yeah, that'll hit for sure. Uh, for max damage, which is 9. Okay. Six. Yeah, it thunks into the throat of the thing and it like stumbles for a couple of steps but still plods forward. Is that it for you, sir? And you'll stay where you are? Yep, hold my ground. Okay. Uh, cut on. You're 80 feet behind uh, this troll uh, down in the snow. Guys? Cut on. Um... Kellen is not sure. He's only got a dagger and there's not much he can do in this fight. He's going to just watch and see what happens. He'll... 
at the moment, ready in action to attack if it comes near him. Okay. Uh, the thing will rush forward towards you, Tanaka. You shot at it again, another 60 feet, so it'll put it 20 feet from you as it bears down upon you. Uh, with its movement and dash. And so it will subsequently put itself 60 feet further away from the rest of you guys, from what it was before. Uh, bellowing as it goes, uh, intent to like bring its clutches down around you, but can't do so yet. Ogai still bellows uh, indignantly. Chulin, you're up next. Okay, so, <laughs> sorry, I don't know where I am now. For, am I still 40 feet from this guy? Did he move? Uh, from the guy he moved 60 in? feet away from you towards Tanaka, who's shooting him. FMD, okay. Um, uh, okay, I will use my action to dodge, uh, to, to run, uh, and then I'll use my key point to use a bonus action to dodge, so I'll run right up to it, uh, and then I'll dodge. Okay, at that point, it would notice you uh, and yeah. turn to regard you and stop in its tracks from chasing Tanaka for a more immediate threat. Sanai, you see this happen. Uh, seeing this happen, Sanai will uh, move closer again um, within probably 30 feet of it uh, and yell. Um, trying to draw its attention as she sees it turn towards Chulun, who is already still injured. Um, you know, she sees the wound on his face and she's not sure if he could survive. Yeah, the thing will hear you and like turn as it like move, moves about marking each of its prey uh, in turn. Uh, but you don't think that it, like for all your shouting and rushing towards it, uh, that will tear its attention from Chulun, who's like at that proximity to it that it can't ignore and are you right like taking your movement and dash to get closer to or just standing where you are and trying to gain the thing's attention uh, taking uh, movement and running an action for if it closes the distance to me so 20 feet away i think i said cool uh tanaka um so that's Thing's attention is turned away from Tanaka at this point. Yeah, it rushed up 20 feet from you, and then Chulun appeared behind it, so it turned about. Sane's rushing in from your right, uh, equidistant from it uh, as you are to you. Okay, I'll just try and uh, continue to attempt to pepper it with arrows. Oh, that's not going to do it. That's going to miss. So I'll okay. love him. Too close and gruesome, you know, shot is put off as the thing like lumbers forth. Uh, next up will be cut on. Now that um, the thing's distracted by Julian, he'll try and sneak up um, and get close to it. So he'll close down, if everything, 45 feet. But he's not close yet. That's right, yeah. Probably about 80 feet from the thing, crawling through the snow, but unnoticed by it. And let's say you'd have to roll stealth checks at this point, Kai, if your intent is to sneak up on the thing, just factor yep. in the slow movement because it's distracted by three immediate yep. foes. Yep. Uh, Muluk is going to try and rip you to pieces, uh, Chulun. Okay, I'm dodging. Yep. Okay. He goes something. It swoops high and you like roll in the snow uh, aside from its clutching grasp. And then again, dodging back uh, as it like tries with a savage backhand. It will lumber forward and like try and bite down on you as you're like rolling across the snow. Uh, for a 17 to hit. I'll hit. Okay. Did we rest at all? So or am I still at 10? Oh, no, six days have gone by uh, mm -hmm. since uh, the events of the dead man. Uh, so you've had, like, yeah, six long rest. <laughs> uh, sorry, did I give you the damage then, Lloyd? I got distracted. <laughs> no, you didn't. Seven piercing damage as he bites uh, down into your side. 
uh, savaging you, uh, ripping back and forth furiously before like letting you go down into the snow. And it gives like a blood soaked roar, uh, which is answered by the other uh, over the gla- in the frozen glade. Uh, though it does not like enter the fray. Uh, Chulun, you're the next to act. Okay. Um, I'm going to unleash uh, a flurry on this thing uh, as best I can. <sighs> I'll spend my second key point to attack it three times. That's a crit on the first one. Uh, a 13 on the second, uh, and an 11 on the third. So probably just a crit, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, the first is a brutal and successful strike. The other two don't penetrate the hide. Uh, it'll be 11 bludgeoning. Nice. Uh, Yeah, you smash into this thing, pummeling its muscles, like gouging at its eyes, like kicking up into its midsection. And it yells out in what can only be described as pain. Yep, so he'll get that smash in and then realize he should be focusing on not getting hit uh, uh, and await for the inevitable pain drain. Can I uh, get a D20 roll from you, please, sir? Uh, a one. Uh, okay, so nothing happens, yeah. uh, but then I need a regular crit, uh, which is D10, please. When you crit on this troll, you get to roll on an additional crit chart of like gruesome trollness. Okay. But, uh, nothing happens on a one. <laughs> uh, I got a four for the D10. Okay, in combat. Uh, and a D10, please. A five. Okay, uh, so like the last of your strikes is like in the side of the head and the creature reels up like one of its taloned hands, clutching at its head as if in like intense migraine. It'll be seeing stars until the end of its next turn and have disadvantage on all attacks and saves. Disadvantage on its attacks and saves? Yep. It's fucking glorious. Amazing. Uh, is that it for you, sir? That's it. Okay, Sinai, then Tanaka. Sinai sees this creature uh, swinging for her brother and Chulun going toe-to-toe with something twice as tall as him and she runs in with a yell uh, swinging this blade wildly 16 to hit that it hits uh, it sinks into the creature's flesh and like ice and blue goop spills out down the blade's head it's a uh, it's six damage and, okay. and she's been wild with her swing um so normally he'd get advantage uh, but it'll just be a straight roll if he attacks her next turn okay tanaka you see your brother and sister like grappling with the thing in melee like you're gouging at it with uh, like fingertips or bringing down crushing elbows or like hacking in with the rusted curved blade 20 feet from you now once again he uh grits his teeth pulls back on the the bowstring and let's fly, hoping for uh, the arrow seeks home, uh, which it should do. That's a 20. That hits. Four. Yep. Uh, for nine damage. Uh, at that, that arrow sinks into its like wide, distended, icy blue belly. And guts begin to spill out. It gives like a horrific cry, which is like answered uh, by the thing beyond in the frozen glade. And you hear its footfalls like stomping through, smashing the ice of the frozen stream, uh, coming uh, to join the fray. Uh, and it's bloodied. Cut on. Sneaking up another 45 feet, I assume. Yep. Cut on. That'll- That'll put you 35 feet uh, from the thing. Hearing hearing the other one approaching, he's trying to um, keep cover from that one as well. Cool. Um, look, uh, we'll try and swipe out twice at you, uh, Chulun, and once at you, Sanai, with disadvantage. A miss for the first at you, Chulun, as it swings another like black-tipped claw. 
I miss again, uh, and it will turn about and like bite at you, Sane, as you like hack into it with your blade for 16 no, to hit. No disadvantage for me, so that... Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, in that case, 23 to hit. Yeah, yeah, that'll just bump to it. Okay, bites in for eight piercing damage, like down over the shoulder, like Savage just twists you to the side and throws you down into the snow, but somehow in the, in the, furry, in the flurry you uh, retain grasp of the curved blade and the thing like bellows like another wounded cry from blood slaked more uh ogai uses its movement and dash to bust through the stream and begin clambering up the other side of the glade putting him 80 from you guys and it's back to the top chulu and then sanai I'm going to unleash another flurry. Actually, I can't. I'm just going to attack it twice then. Uh, with my fists and see what I can do. Uh, first one's a 12. Second one's 18 on the die, which will do it. Uh, that will be six bludgeoning. Just like uh, lash out with a kick and catch it in the ankle, maybe. Yeah, it twists painfully and like sc like flood, um, stumbles down to the snow, but then like rights itself up, intending to fight on. Sana and Tanaka. Sana from her spot in the snow um, kind of grabs her shoulder with one hand but then still swings the blade across um, and catches it across the knee, um, the back of the knee as it's turned to face Jaloon again. Uh, nine damage. Nice. Slashing through like a tendon, uh, blood spatters out on the snow, uh, blue and cold. Tanaka, you see your siblings taking to this thing uh, like wolves to a reindeer. Yeah, he pulls a, another arrow from his quiver and lets fly, but in his haste that he's not check the arrow properly it's snow's falling upon it and ice is on the the feathers and it falls short with the weight for a miss cut on cut on closes down the final distance and stabs at the rises up and stabs at the thing for yep stabs into it for oh 12 points of damage Nice. Yeah, it gives a yell of pain as you like slash down the back of what serves as the thing's calves and like muscle um, spills out with the blood. Twelve puts him on. Very badly bloodied, like the thing's like got wounds uh, spurting, like spurting blood all about it. And when it wheels to like swipe at one <laughs> sibling, it's cut by another and roars in pain again. He dances back out of range from it. How far out of range? Um... Well, he moved 20 feet up, if I remember right, so he'll move 25 feet away. Okay, cool. Because he's oh, no, 25. Um, You're sorry. well out of his reach now. No, it'll be 10 feet. 10 feet. Okay. Uh, then Moloch will surprise you by doing an attack at uh, your brother, then your sister, and then at you, still within its grasp of its black talons. So it'll be a bite at you, Chulun, uh, for a... 17 on the die, which will hit, uh, which is nine piercing damage. Uh, on Sano will be a 12, which will miss. And cut on an 18 on the die, which will be seven slashing damage. Cut on as it rips down the front of your shirt, slashing across your chest with black uh, claws. Uh, oh, guy like runs uh, cresting the hill uh, and like beginning to move down the other side. So moving 60 out of his 180. 120 from you, Tanaka. So you'd see in your periphery this other thing like lumbering over the rise to your right, heading for the fray, uh, but still some 120 feet off yet. Uh, Chulun's back to you as you recover from that brutal slash. Yeah, he's barely standing, um, but it's kill or be killed. Uh, and so he will try to kill. It's 17 on the die. For the first, and a 19 on the die for the second, it's two hits. Yep. Uh, three and two is five plus six is 11 damage. 
How do you kill it? Oh God, how do you beat a troll to death? Um, I reckon he like, uh, it like comes down to bite at him and he uh, is going to like smash his elbow into the jaw and like dislocate it and then like pull on the lower jaw and just like pull it off, like, put a foot on the troll's chest and pull it off and the blood loss will uh, kill it almost immediately. Oh, this is like blood spouting out of its ruined jaw and just falls down <laughs> into the snow before you. And when you look up from this, like this grisly sundering, you see another whole fresh thing rushing towards you with lethal intent. Uh, Sana, you're the next to act. Uh, you actually have a movement, sorry, left Chulun, if you wanted to do anything else. Where's the other one? Rushing towards you guys, it's just headed down the like the other side of like from the frozen glade, and it's 120 feet from where Tanaka stands, and he stands 20 feet from where you stand. So it's about 140 feet from you and your okay. sister. Yeah, I'll move uh, my 40 feet to stand in front of Tanaka. Okay. Uh, Sanai, you're next to act. Uh, Sanai looks at them and says, what are you doing? Run! Um, and she will back up a single movement away from the thing that's coming. Okay, so that will put you 60, 180 from the thing, Sanai. Okay. Uh, Tanaka. Uh, Tanaka will uh, shout out. I think Sonny is right. We should run. Uh, but as he says that, he lines up a shot and takes it at the one running in. Oh, guy. Uh, it was a... It was a hit. Uh, it'll be six damage. The arrow flies through the air. Hoping to yeah, it thunks into chest. his belly. Oh, in the chest then, disappears up yeah. to the fletching, but does not halt his advance. And I I wouldn't... I'll move ten foot back. Uh, I'll take a few steps back, but I'm not okay. going to leave chilling here. All right. Uh, Karan, you're the next to act. Um, Kadan tries and hides himself under the fallen troll and lies in wait. Okay. Yeah, it's freezing inside this thing or like amongst this thing's corpse, not like steaming hot entrails like you'd expect of a beast of like this size and power. Uh, but nonetheless, it will hide you in amongst its like <laughs> frozen sludgy entrails. <laughs> Um, Moloch uh, is slain, and so Ogo will just lumber forward another 60 feet, putting him 70 feet from Tanaka, 30 feet from Chulun, 80 feet from Karan, and 120 feet from Sanai. Uh, and that's all he can do, and it's Chulun's turn. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take the dodge action, uh, and that'll be the end of my turn. Ho, ho, ho. I can hear the horsehair harp now. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, Sanai. You can see uh, again your brothers uh, and you extol your wisdom on them. Falls on deaf ears. Yeah. As Chulun like, stands defiantly, like readying himself in that nimble pose that you know uh, so well. Sanai screams in frustration at this bull-headed brother of hers um, and moves back towards Chulun, not willing to leave him. Um, so I'll, I'll double move to get close to him if I can. Okay, that'll put you 60 feet from the thing uh, and 30 feet from your brother, from Chulun. Okay, that's fine. Okay, uh, after Sanai Tanaka, then Karan. Seeing that uh, Chulun is decided to do, to hold his ground. Um, he too adopts a, a stance uh, of the art, the actually stance, uh, and he'll just continue to fire arrows as the thing lumbers closer. Uh, it was a 20 something to hit and it's six that damage. Hits. Okay. Another arrow that sinks in up to the fletching into the thing. 
There's two arrows in it now, uh, but it still charges forward, bellowing. Will you stay in the in the position you currently are? Yeah, sorry, yeah, I'm not moving. Okay. Uh, to make a cut on. Um, Karan is Karan is doing the same. He's staying where he is, hidden. Ready to action to attack it if it gets within range, but it's going to go through Chulun first. Okay. Uh, Ogai will rush up the remaining thirty feet uh, to close with you, Chulun, and unleash. Brutality, thrice at disadvantage. May the Sky Father watch over you. Uh, miss. 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 So you roll and uh, dodge about it, gouges up stone, rock, uh, and snow, sending it about, roaring its fury as it misses you like three times, biting down into the snow as you like nimbly like dart aside from it. You can feel like it's bulk. Uh, and force as you like narrowly avoid uh, being shredded by its seeking claws. Uh, it like rears back up and like howls into the sky. Uh, its frustration will not lumber further uh, past to any of your siblings and until you're dealt with. Uh, and it's your turn now. Uh, I will just um, kind of like move around behind it uh, and try and keep it like looking at me. My idea would be to get behind it or like run through its legs so that it's looking away from the rest of my siblings, uh, and then just take dodge action again. Nice. Uh, you definitely can. Uh, you roll through its cumbersome legs, spring up the other side, like nimbly, like weaving like a snake from side to side and getting its attention and hopefully warding off its strikes. Your companions can see the back of it now. Uh, Sanai and Tanaka. Uh, Sanai comes up and she feels this frustration at her brother and this distaste for this thing welling up inside her. And when her blade sinks into the back of it, as it's followed Chulun with its head and with its body, uh, it is even harder this time. It's like a 20 something to hit um, really well. And it's going to be 11 damage. Okay. It screams in pain as you like hack into its back uh, and like wheels about uh, to regard you. Uh, Tanaka, you see this before you, your brother and sister engaged in melee with the second of these monsters. It stands 30, 40 feet from you. Two of your arrows in its chest. He'll, he'll follow its uh, furious twirl. It's certainly... Uh hangs onto the back of this thing and it turns uh, and he'll line up a shot waiting for that moment so that he can get it in the uh, in the belly. Mm -hmm. It was a 17 to hit but it's only 5 damage this time. Yeah, it just like slots to, or like pierces through like the flab of its like pallid blue arm and like sings out the other side to disappear into the snow like a glancing wound. And yeah, you can pull another arrow out and ready it, noticing that there's <laughs> less arrows left in there than you'd like. And cut on, you're the next to act. Now that it's engaged, he, um, when it's looking on at one of his um, brothers or sisters, he'll sneak, um, he'll sneak, pause, um, pause completely still and hidden when it's when he falls within its gaze again, and then dash forwards again, moving up 30 feet closer while trying to keep this, keep hidden. Does that bring him within range? Uh, if you move 30 towards where it currently is from where you are, it'll put you 20 feet from it. Yep. So that's, that's what he's planning, and he'll try and get in a, an attack next round if there okay. are still any people standing. Yeah, it doesn't seem to have noticed you too focused on uh, Sane, Sanai and Shulun, uh, even as your brother stands behind uh, on a rise, just like firing arrows into it indiscriminately. Um, 
Ogai is next. Uh, so he's going to swing uh, twice at you. Um, Chulun, uh, and once at your sister as she slashes him in the back. You're dodging, so that'll be a miss. And a miss. Uh, and then a bite on you, Sane, as you like hack into it. Twists about uh, for a 16 to hit. Uh, actually, it's got Good. advantage on me. Oh, okay. Uh, well, it's not a crit, but still a 16 to hit. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be five piercing damage. Sorry, uh, six piercing damage. Uh, and that's it for it. It will stay right where it is. Chulun, you're the next to act. Uh, much the same. Uh, I'll keep trying to turn it away from Sarnai uh, and from Tanaka so they can get good shots at it, uh, and I will dodge. Nice. The Dawson dodge. Sarnai, you're next. And I let out a, a scream from the pain as this thing has bitten into her uh, in much the same place as the first one. And uh, she strikes out again, uh, catching it, but not as strongly. Six damage. Okay. Yeah, just like hacking into the thing furiously, but it doesn't seem to be driving it off or like mortally wounding it. Just cold sludge spills out from the wounds you score across it. Okay, eight damage. Cool. And then after Sana, it's Tanaka, then cut on. Well, I should say that Tanaka's, uh, well, aware that the, the arrows are starting to run low now as he flails about in the quiver, uh, desperately searching for a missile. He finds one, knocks it to his bow, and pulls, and rolls a natural one. Okay, uh, roll a percentile. Uh, 50 or below will hit Sanai. Uh, 51 or above will hit Chulun. Actually, no, the troll's obscuring you from Chulun, from your line of sight, so it'll be hitting Sanai. So just roll straight up damage then? Uh-huh. Sorry. Oh, actually, no, no, we'll say you still roll to hit. Uh, roll hat, uh, 13. Okay, so the arrow misses both and narrowly avoids Sarnai. They fire into the melee fray. Cut on. Ass arrows whistling, blood spurting, and your sister hacking into this monster. You creep up through the uh, snow. What do you do? You feed from the thing? He's been... He's taken a bead on the thing's um, Achilles tendon, and he's he he closes the last um, he closes the last distance behind it and slashes out with his antler hilted dagger at it. And but last minute, it just turns around and he he slashes empty air, and he's just revealed in front of it without having managed to hit. Oh no. Ten. Yeah, uh, you slash out at the thing, but do not score it. So it will like, turn and notice you. Uh, mark you as an enemy and slash out now with its multi-attack. One claw at Chulun, uh, one claw at Sanai, and one bite uh, at Cut-On. So we have a disadvantage on you, Lloyd. 14. What is your assume? Okay. Sanai, a crit, a crit fail. <laughs> and Cut-On, uh, 13 is not going to hit you, I assume. Cut on. Yes, it is. Okay, you'll take seven slashing damage. So it bites down on you into the snow and like savages you about before throwing you down to the ground again. And it will stay where it is. Chulun then Sanai. Uh, boringly enough, same for me. Uh, try and keep it looking at me and not at them uh, and dodge. Sarnai is feeling uh, weaker. Uh, the bites on her shoulder, the blood that continues to turn the snow red. Um, 
and she swings, but there is very little strength behind it. Tanaka. Cursing himself after the the last arrow uh, flew wide. He's, uh, he's actually going to drop the ball and pull a blade and rush forward and into the, the melee. Uh, it was a 15 to hit. I don't know if that's... What was the... That hits. That is a hit. Uh, in that case, it'll be 7 damage. Okay. She slices at it. Cut on. Now everyone has joined the fray. Everyone from your carnate. Um, cut on. Also slashes out, but misses um, feebly with a seven, and then um, disengages and moves back out of range of this. Um, having learned his lesson last time, he moves. He, he moves. Moves thirty feet back. So a, was that a strike and a miss, and then you move yeah. back? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, my luck is dead, I'll go. Uh, and how far did you move back in feet, Kaios? 30. 30, okay. So you're at, well out of his reach. He's going to go twice at you, Chulun, and then once at you, Tanaka. Miss on Chulun. Uh, a miss on Chulun. And then a miss on Tanaka. So he's just like railing about with claw and tooth, like a uh, maniacally at this stage uh, and inaccurately and ineffectively for that round. Uh, Chulun, you're next. So it seems to be working uh, and he seems to be focusing on me. Uh, so Chulun will continue to like uh, make these strange sort of noises uh, and like strike out here and there. Uh, but mostly he's just protecting himself and jumping out of the way. I'll continue to dodge. Okay. Sanai. Uh, having Tanaka there with her gives Sanai more strength. Um, and she she shifts her feet to better match her brothers uh, and strikes out again at the creature. Uh, seven damage. So, I think it was out a blood curdling cry uh, and like it's got many savage wounds rent across it. Uh, bloodied, uh, like bellows uh, for aid, uh, though he's not answered. Uh, like the slain kith about it. Uh, Tanaka, you're next to act. As one of the kind of heavy limbs flies across, Tanaka will duck down and bring his uh, blade up into its side. It's a 20 something to hit. Uh, it hits. It's eight damage. She so slices into it this time. Yeah, a gruesome wound, and it sends the creature reeling forward, its ice and sludge pouring out, though it does not vanquish it, though it is a mighty blow. And cut on, you see this uh, back out of like claw and blood spatter range where you stand heaving. And again, he sees an opening, dashes in, stabs. This time his blade connects. He does eight points of damage. Oh, nice. Yeah, same as I described before. Like, as it goes to swing at one of you, one of you darts in and strikes it, and by the time it wheels about, you know, and it presented with another foe or nothing. So it is again as more of its blood spatters out to mingle with your, the blood of Yago, though it is not slain. Uh, and will act now to try and rend you uh, head from body, Chulun. For a miss. For a miss. 14 doesn't hit. Thank God. Three misses somehow. You're just like darting about rolling just beyond reach of this troll. Uh, Sanai cling onto its back, hacking into it with uh, this curved blade. Uh, you're next. 19, so close. Um, uh -huh. uh, Sarnai is, yeah, hacking is the best word. Um, as she tries to give it any wound to pierce through its weird grayish, bluish skin um, into whatever organs might exist there. Uh, but she continues her assault on it, uh, 11 damage. Okay. Nice. 
yeah, it's so easy now as it's so distracted. You stand behind it and just bring down like like almost like a woodsman's chop into it, cutting in deep into the grotesque flesh again and heaving your like boot up onto it to like prize the blade, fl- blade free again for another slash. Uh, as this happens, Tanaka, it's your turn. Yeah, the, the last blow uh, bent the, the blade in his hand, causing his, his hand to the wrist to roll. Uh, he doesn't get the, the purchase on the swing uh, and just kind of slaps the flat of the blade against his flank. Uh, he misses. Mm-hmm. Karan. Karan also dashes forwards and, and stabs at it but misses and then falls back 15 feet to see if that's close enough um, to be hit or not. Okay. Uh, the badly wounded Ogre is going to try and yeah, rend Chulun in its fury. You avoid a crit uh, for a miss. A miss. Another crit uh, and a 16 to hit. So 16 to hit. Yep. Okay. You avoided two crits, though, from the troll. <laughs> yeah. Pretty good. The dodge did you pretty well. You're going to take eight slashing damage uh, yeah. from the hit. So he just, like, slashes once and you dodge aside again. He rips up, like, the snow and, like, puts his head through, like, the uh, the cloud so that you roll through and just bites hold of your leg and throws you down to the uh, snow and you don't, don't rise again, being knocked unconscious from blood loss and from just, like, the, the savage, like, being smashed down into the ground so heavily and it turns to regard um, Tanaka and Sanai and as it sweeps about with its claws you know 15 feet from it like you know from it cut on that it cannot reach you from there and as it do- deals with Chulun uh, death save please my lord okay uh, two fail Sanai Sanai screams and yells and launches herself at this thing. Um, The blade in her hand, almost an afterthought, but it still hits uh, 10 damage as she's filled with fear and worry for her brother. Your uh, slice cuts the thing's leg off uh, at its ruined knee that's been rent through so many times with a great gout of sludgy blood uh, and a scream, screaming yell, uh, clutching at its uh, ruination. It falls down into the snow, writhing, attacking you no more, uh, bleeding out swiftly um, upon the snow, no steam rising from its corpse. Tanaka. Uh, well, no mercy if it's on the ground. So yeah, Tanaka will take his blade and try and hack its neck. Yeah, you do so. Cut its head off and stop it screaming. Its death rattles. Cut on. Cut on. Dashes forward and with the plan that he had anyway, he drags Chulun um, 10 feet from it and then tries to imitate what he's seen um, what he's seen Tanaka do and um, uh, stop the bleeding um, clenches his fists over the wounds on Chulun and um, tries to just um, get him breathing again and the wounds to stop bleeding quite so much medicine yep medicine no he he doesn't really know what he's doing and he's too much blood okay uh chulun death save please sir five fail sanai Sana comes over to her brother. Um, let me help, let me help. Uh, Eleven medicine. As she tries desperately to staunch the bleeding. Still no response. Still he bleeds uh, unconscious. Tanaka. 
at Knaka also rushing over. Um, will grab Sarnay's hand and direct her where to, to uh, put pressure as he begins to bind the wounds. It'll be a 22 medicine. Yeah, you bind them up, compress the bleeding, and use like mud to stave up the worst of like the reds in your brother, and like elevate him such uh, that he won't like choke on vomit or blood or his own tongue, and see that he breathes still, and like haul him away somewhere closer uh, to comfort uh, than amongst like the ruins uh, of these two trolls. And we'll take a break there, I think. <sighs> Good work. Cool. Back in five. Yeah, see if I can vibe now that we can take a breath.
Kaius, are you back with us? Yep, I'm back. Okay, cool. So you've managed to stabilize uh, Chulun, uh, and uh, less than an hour after your fray uh, with these ice and trolls, you found a, a ridge to hide against a cruel wind as it carries in uh, a light snowstorm. You're able to summon a fire into life with some of the wood from dead trees that you've carried with you across the endless plains uh, and bring up skins uh, and hides uh, and huddle in amongst uh, the life-saving fire. Uh, monitoring Chulun uh, until another two hours go by and it's late afternoon before you'd finally rouse Chulun and lapse back into consciousness and feel the pain of the wounds and the sting of life. Yeah, he's just in bits. Like, he can't even moan properly because his throat is still raw um, and, like, scar on his face hurts, but then he's got these other, like, terrible scars. I think he just will, like, lie there as long as he is allowed to. Uh, and like, if he sees some of them looking at him, he'll pretend to be asleep so he doesn't have to move. Sarnai is sitting next to him, uh, her own wounds more or less bandaged. And she's just muttering at him, convinced he's asleep, but chiding him all the same. You should have listened to me. You should have listened to me. You should have run. It was careless. It was stupid. It was reckless. I don't care if you look tough or not. Just, you're not allowed to do that again. I will kill you if you do it again, okay? Okay. And he's like hearing it, but he keeps his eyes closed because uh, he can't deal with that. Uh, he's like too exhausted. And the hours pass uh, and it grows colder and darkness falls. You like share out the last of like the brick hard horse meat, softening it in your mouths before like tending to chew and swallow it, warming yourselves uh, by the fire and stoking it to keep it alive. The wind keeps up, uh, but night gives way uh, to morning eventually. Uh, once like... he's got over the sorry, Go ahead. once he's got over the initial fright and shock of the fight, Kadan is full of it, and he's he he's talking about he, he recounts every blow that was landed every sort of um hit every miss every sort of little thing just irritating um probably irritating sanai children will like uh continue like he'll wake up in the morning but will pretend to be asleep and he wants to try and avoid doing as much work as possible and like milking uh, his injuries uh, for as long as he can Okay. Yes. Do you think we could find some of the arrows? You don't look like you have any left. Some of them should be retrievable. I'll help. I don't think we can go anywhere very soon with children like this. I'll help too. Kadan shouts, jumping up. Some warm food in our bellies would be nice. If you see anything. Can we eat troll? If. No. It would surely make you sick. I see that look on your face. No. So 
sometimes your curiosity really goes too far. But you can't help but hold a smile back at it. So there's a plan to like scrounge and forage uh, for food in these hills? Yeah, um, to find something. Um, you, you s there's a ridge above us, kind of where we are. Yep, shattering, shattering you from the northern wind. If um, if that was to be climbed up, would that give us a good view over this glade to see? Certainly. Almost like a bird's eye view, basically. Yeah, you could clamber up it and gain a better like purchase and survey of the land around your uh, camp mm -hmm. and down over to the glade too, presumably. That's what I'll do once we've uh, gathered up some of the arrows. So Tanaka like clambers up uh, the ridge. It would take you like, less than half an hour to, to carefully uh, ascend it uh, and when at the top, uh, can find like a boulder to gain purchase on uh, and look down uh, or to the north you just see foothills rising further uh, and taller uh, than the one you currently are astride to the east down into this like frozen glade and nestled into the side of like uh, the mountain range that kind of looks over to it uh, over this frozen glade there's like a stone keep of shower design uh, or something older like carved into like the base of it Further to the south, you can see uh, like plains drinking up the distance and east the snowy path uh, you've come uh, into these foothills. You'll probably see Karan uh, moving off uh, to like snare animals or like look for uh, edibles. You can make a survival check, uh, Karan. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do up there, Tanaka? Uh, no, I will look around to see if there's any um, anything edible to be picked. A survival check. Nah. He doesn't see anything that he recognises anyway. By the time you clambered down, uh, I imagine Karan has returned empty-handed also. Nothing? I found nothing. Our bellies will go empty once again. Or oh, we could eat troll. No. Stop thinking about it. I can see you thinking about it, Kadan. We're not eating that thing, either of them. Tanaka, where do we go? Surely it would be better even to be in the land of our enemies to be somewhere away from things like that. And Chulun will probably die soon, and he, what? he will make a better meal. Do not say that! Don't eat me. No one's going to eat you. I thought you were asleep. <laughs> we don't like do this like fake snore. Honestly. So, something in my heart tells me to head east. To the place of the old cans. But looking upon it, all I see is more of the same. And it will gesture towards the, the glade that we've already seen.
there's a, a building made of stone in that direction. Perhaps there's something there for us. Who builds homes of stone? You'd have to roll a history check. How do you pack up a home of stone and follow the tribe, follow the herd? Thinking. Maybe trolls. Yes. Maybe trolls make their yurts of stone and follow the because they're strong and they can carry the heavy things. I think it was placed there by someone with longer memories than trolls. Like what, Tanaka? I do not know. Giants? No. No, not giants. Singchi said once that the Khans used to. They didn't always move, live in the yurts and move them around. They had buildings of stone. And they moved stone around. No. Come on. That... Other Khans, they lived in one place. They didn't follow herds. Ah. Uh, the shit handlers. Sounds barbaric. I've heard of farming shit handlers. People will grow fat if they don't move. Mm. Well, then maybe there's food there. Fat and we can weak. breed them. And steal, steal their weak farming things. Nico, was that to the east or was that a different direction? Yeah, east of the way that you'd fled from the corpses of the trolls or like moved away back, I imagine, from the way you'd encountered the trolls. That ice and glade, uh, and from the purchase that Tanaka had when he climbed up, you can see that there's a stone keep embedded in the base of the wall, observing that ice and glade. That's all towards the east. The north was like the higher mountains that lead towards the ice and sea. Um, back east was the endless plains that you guys have been cutting through the last week, uh, and south, uh, you know, is the way towards the Goldway, uh, which will go through other tarn, like Chugun hordes, like your own, the Cassidy reindeers, Dilat snow cats. Uh, Nike and Wolves. Tanaka, if your heart says east, we should follow it. And if it was wrong. Well, then we'll know the way back here. And it's it's safer following your heart than your head. My head never tells me where to go. It's because your feet wouldn't listen. Stubborn. Or perhaps there's something for us in the stone. Who knows what's been left behind? Who knows if someone's still there? Food, shelter. For now, it's the best chance we've got. Tulum will nod and then like begin to stand up and he'll take maybe a full minute to stand up and he will groan for the entire time. Sarnia is by your side, uh, kind of propping you up. You see, you see. 
Hey, hey, hey. Go slow. I'm okay. You've got hardly any meat left on you. You'd be, you'd make poor eating now, Shulun. You better walk. If you eat me, I'll come back like a skeleton, and I'll eat you. Boys. So the next day, once you've rested again and to recover from your wounds uh, gained by the furrow with the trolls, you back track again, heading further east of that ridge line. Uh, when you come upon uh, the scene uh, of your fight with them, you can see that one like uh, corpse of the troll uh, has like a moving leg sporting from it, uh, moving about tentatively as if to try and gain purchase and climb out of itself on the snow around it. The other uh, can be observed having an arm that's trying to like claw itself free from the melted body. What you thought was like sundered and dead wriggles uh, with some unholy purpose, like trying to like re generate itself uh, and come free of like death and, and rot uh, to stalk these ice and hills once more. Kirli, what is that? Um, Tanaka. We should have eaten them. They would make us strong like them. Would tear out your stomach from the inside. No. Just keep walking. To so ignore the things and make the way up uh, the uh, and over down to the gully where there's that stream frozen over, like shards of it busted from the passage of these two trolls as they uh, pursued you guys. Uh, the ice seems like sturdy and thick enough over what is the river flowing beneath it or the stream flowing beneath it, such that you could walk across it and into this glade. Uh, where, as I said, like the trees, the grasses, everything like that uh, seems frozen, as if doused and frozen. The wind whistles strangely through the crystalline uh, trees as it careens down the side of uh, the mountains beyond. As you head east, like stalking through it, uh, you can see in the distance uh, the silhouettes of humanoids against like the uh, morning light as it refracts off the ice uh, about the place. Though after a couple of moments of observation, you can see those, they too are like frozen like statues in place. One is a deep folk, or the road folk, as they're called by the tarn, short and squat, some four and a half feet tall, garbed in some strange stone type of armour, fearsome visage and pose uh, that he's like stuck in for how, who knows how long. Beyond him, a woman taller than any of you, uh, hair the colour of straw, uh, a great blade uh, shining encased in ice, uh, held aloft in her hand, a look of defiance on her through like the blurring uh, obscuring ice uh, that's encased her. Then as you move forward, one of the forest folk of the west, uh, shorter, slim, fearsome gaze carved upon his ice and face, bow strung, arrow left unfired into the, uh, like heading up towards the mouth of this stone keep. And you can move about them uh, and notice the finery they once must have bore when they lived, for sure they don't live now, uh, trapped and this like frozen encasement, as well as every other kind of organic or living thing in here. By those trolls you slew, you see no more of their ilk, those signs of their passage about the place, destroyed trees or like great gouges through like the snowfall uh, made by feet too big uh, for the tarn.
big dagger will uh, approach one of these frozen statues, as it were, and he'll, he'll uh, breathe hot air from his lungs onto them, uh, give it a wipe to clear off the, the frost, uh, and stare in a, a wonderment. Looking around, this, the, 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 just the, um, the sheer amount of uh, frozen things here. Tulu will be like looking around and his stomach will like rumble. Um, might be like rolling his shoulder to try and like get it to uh, feel less painful. Uh, and he'll just be like looking around in wonder uh, and in fear. Do you think we can eat the road folk? Oh, I'd eat anything. Can you both stop thinking of your stomachs for at least a little while? We're almost there. Who knows what we'll find? So are we inside the building, or just these things are on the way up to it? Yeah, they're in the glades. You guys aren't in the building. You can see it in the distance now, like walking through uh, beyond the river, like the frozen stream, sorry. If you haven't like walked up uh, to it or into the keep, it appears these people were like frozen in place, approaching the where you were heading. And if you move past them, they'll silently watch you go. Is there any, like remnants of a, a cook fire or a kill or anything that maybe these trolls had been eating? Uh, can I get an investigation? Actually, no, that's not so, it's not so appropriate as I would say a survival. Uh, so you, for that, you would see like drag marks in the snow, like maybe the things have been like brought uh, from surrounds uh, through here and up into the keep, but there are no signs of like carcasses or kills in the glade where you'd spied the trolls. Do we keep going? What else can we do? But what if there's a magic that makes us like them? And she points to the frozen figures. Yeah, Javon hadn't thought of that. Uh, he like scratch the back of his head um, and look around and he'll look to Tanaka to make the decision. We've come as far as they did, and we haven't turned to ice. Mm -hmm. Really, that's about as much as he'll say. He's uh, unsure himself. It's more of a kind of small reassurance. So what do you guys do? All together? Yeah, children will move. So you guys head forward uh, past the frozen people up to this stone smooth uh, keep jutting out of the side of the mountain. 
It's huge, like carved and curved black basalt slabs uh, that kind of hold it in place. It yawns open uh, yet uninvitingly. Uh, you can't help uh, but note the similarity to the construct of this or the material of this uh, as to like that black chain that Karan had found and he'd woven about into a coil. I believe it was Tanaka. And the closer you get to the mouth of it, the more you can see like gouged up tracks of troll folk making their way in and out of like the dark uh, caverns beyond. And although it's light outside, it's an oppressive darkness within the winter keep. Do you stalk into the darkness? Or will you take a branch uh, or some kindling and make a torch? So Chulun can't see in the dark, so he'll like take some kindling and light it uh, and head in. Yeah, illuminating the uh, caverns beyond. You can see like it's a kind of like what I guess you've had like show uh, architecture described to you as like curving, uh, like vaulted uh, ceilings, uh, open sp open planned finery. Uh, but this seems like older still. Uh, and you can't imagine like Yagai Khan or some other Khan like sitting in this stone house, like Kadan points out, cannot be moved uh, with like the migration of the herds. But it has a, like a sense of imperiosity or powerfulness, uh, despite how like ominous it is. Uh, and the dark uh, will eagerly like drink up the torch, such you can only kind of see down the hallway, you know, 10, 20 uh, feet or so before you have to like move forward and explore further uh, down these like shining walls that once must have held tapestries, but now just rot uh, clings to them, though not like the dust or detritus that would build up. Uh, in a place completely abandoned. It seems things have moved through here and that horrid stink that accompanied like the writhing corpses of the trolls is like more uh, profound down here uh, as you move about. You hear that same sound again, like grumbling argument, the speech of those trolls uh, as you like approach uh, where a brick, uh, like black brick stone wall blocks the way beyond and forces a T kind of intersection uh, coming from the right path. Uh, you can hear like the garbled speech of these things. No, like no well guarded place uh, is this uh, just opening dark and dank. And you guys move silently uh, as you have like practically nothing about you. Uh, despite the sounds of these things, which uh, you can tell definitely uh, more still dwell down in here. I guess hearing that, Julian would like stop uh, and look back at them with this like questioning look, like. He almost died fighting the other two. Um, so, like, look at them with a uh, sort of shrug. black stone archway that leads off to the left uh, yawns ominous uh, and quiet yeah, he's looking at you guys unsure of what to do Kalan Kalan um, gets bored waiting for Tanaka's orders and goes through the dark archway The silent one. Yes. So you slip off uh, while your siblings uh, debate uh, into the darkness, creeping along, uh, leaving the torchlight uh, provided by Chulun behind, down like a black slippery floor, uh, rushed with God knows what. You can hear like a rat or something like scurry off in the distance fleeing from your path keeping one hand on like the smooth stone wall you can kind of orientate as you wind about so uh, like this darkened tunnel uh, the more your like vision fails in the darkness the more your ears become attuned to like the sounds of your passage uh, around you uh, as you like round uh, what feels as a corner to your fingertips you can see the hints and twinge of a blue glow off in the distance down the curvature of like the the basalt hallway 
that you're creeping down fills you with a sense of dread uh, and the sound of your uh, sibling's speech and like the grumbled arguments of Trolls Beyond uh, is faint to hear next to kind of like an oppressive thrum uh, in lieu of any other noises. Curiosity overcoming good sense. He presses on to see if he can see what is causing this blue glow. Can I get a stealth check from you, please, sir? That is... Uh... Just a 10. So the source of the blue uh, kind of luminescent glow uh, is a thing, is some horrid, uh, mind-boggling thing, like a creature, uh, a demon-given creature form, an insectoid head, this like distended thorax banded in some unholy blue and like glowing and pulsating as like mandibles click in some profane rhythm. Uh, it like casts shadows from like the stone columns which support this vaulted room. And in the center of it, you can see uh, that this is sitting astride a stone throne of like a Western man make. They make things like angled and bold uh, to impress useless and clumsy. This once could have been like the seat of Khan's Yamun Khan himself may have sit here, but whatever this is, is no thing of the Tarn. Uh, and its head swivels uh, as you like peer around the corner and it chitters something. Can you make a charisma save, please? <laughs> oh, dear. Fifteen. Yeah, the echoing uh, chittering of this thing uh, is lost upon you. Uh, you feel no compulsion. Uh, what do you do? I turn and run back to my um, to my brothers and sister. So I can shoot him as like making his way down after, uh, and then sees Kadan running, and this is like a familiar sight, and he knows uh, what to do. He'll like the torch he has. To like smash it out against the wall and begin running back as well out hang on whistling um to <laughs> attract the other's attention he 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 carries on running to try and get out of here The blue glow seems to follow you uh, as you like turn your brother and run Chulun down the hallway with him. And this thing like spills from the hallway back the way uh, that he'd like crept up to observe in his curiosity. Uh, it must have noticed his passage or your hurried exchange of words between him. I'm just going to keep running. Um, if Kadan is running, usually that means we have to go. Uh, so I'm gonna run, and if I see Sarnai or Tanaka on the way, I'm going to like uh, grab their shoulders, turn them around, and try and push them out of the place. Yes, similarly, when Kadan and Chaloon both come running, there's an eye roll and a turn to run. Do you guys flee? I'm oh, sorry, Tanaka. Yeah, so I think Tag has taken with this uh, this whole place, this this building made of stone. He's probably mesmerized by it, so he probably doesn't notice that the siblings are running uh, until they're almost at the front door, as it were. Uh, before he looks around and sees them, panicked, uh, and then automatically takes off after them. Uh, how fast can you move in a turn, Karan uh, and Chulun? Like your maximum feet? 80. Can only dash once, right? Yep. Move yeah, yeah. dash. So Karan can outpace you. He's smaller and swifter. So this like thing uh, glows brighter behind you, and you can hear like uh, insectoid scuttling. 
as it like uh, scrapes along the black basalt hallway as you chance to look over your shoulder uh, as the troll uh, days ago. This thing gains on you uh, and your brother outstrips you. Does Dash move you twice? No, you move is 40, Dash is 40 on top of that, so oh, 80, which okay. is like the move yep. Dash speed of this thing. Uh, but Cardan can move further uh, by some. So I've got a bonus there. Okay. Oh, okay. So as you guys are running, you see this thing like spill out of the mouth uh, of the Winter Keep uh, after you guys like pointing and roaring in some like reverberating insectoid tongue. And there's like a grumbled argument type uh, responses to it from deeper within the keep as it comes alive. And you guys sprint down through the frozen glade past uh, the frozen sentinels. Uh, and it will not uh, give chase to you uh, beyond the glade if you flee it further than that. Yeah, I reckon we run until uh, Kadan stops, um, at which stage we probably run a little bit further, and then we can like squat down somewhere uh, and children would like grab him. What did you see? What was it? I don't know. It was an insectoid thing sitting on some ancient western throne of stone, um, and it recognised me. And when it, when it's, when it's came out with its strange scuttling, yattering speech, it felt I felt a compulsion to obey it, to approach approach it. I think, but I, but fortunately, I was too scared, and I ran away. Julian like doesn't know how to process that. He's like scratching the back of his head again. Um he just looks at uh Kadan like what? Uh and he'll look at Tanaka. Maybe we should go somewhere else. Yes. It didn't look good to eat. No, I wouldn't imagine so. Hmm. No, there's nothing for us here. Nothing like here to encounter. There's quite a lot of meat on it. In it. I'm sure it was thinking the same about you. What did you see in the room with it? I didn't see anything except the throne in it. I'm thinking back, did I see anything else? Because uh, no, you didn't explore the room uh, or have a look. You fled straight away. Uh, so I think like you would have noticed the throne only because the glowing insectoid thing was on top of it. Uh, so you couldn't really say what else was in the room other than that. I think that would have had like that would have summoned your whole attention. What do what do trolls eat? Everything. But they eat flesh, if the stories are true. Preferably the f flesh of children, but flesh. So there must be flesh somewhere in this hill. Mm. We cannot stay near that place. Tanaka, where do we go? At this point, the knack is at a loss. I 
from his uh, viewpoint on the rise, does it look like we could pass through this void in uh, a couple of days? Yeah, you could give a wide berth to the south and stick like to the mountains in view, keeping them in view to your north while you travel a couple of days uh, around to avoid it. I think that's what he would suggest then. What about the... Well, there was two corridors down there, was there? There was one that uh, Kadan went down, but there was a second one, was there? Where we heard the trolls talking? That's right, yep. Troll grumbling down the right corridor and like nothing but that ominous blue glow down the left corridor. Mm -hmm. And they were the kind of two only approaches further in and up into that keep. Is there any... Um, are there any signs, any tracks of any kind of um, cattle or goats or anything like that that the trolls keep or do they not sane noticed like a few like drag marks around the place in the frozen glade uh, but definitely not like a heap not like they're bringing a lot of produce in What if we can make the trolls fight the thing? Maybe they don't know they're there. And Chaloon kind of grins like that's a great plan. <laughs> the uh, enemy of my enemy is my friend that's what father used to say but what if they're working together what if they both eat us we can't go back More walking? I don't know. But it frightens me. I don't want to go back. There's a path we're supposed to be on. We just need to find it. I'm not for finding paths. I'm for cracking skulls. You tell me where to go. Away from here for now, at least. Through this frozen glade. So you set off south uh, and leave it at your backs uh, for a day or more before cutting uh, further east, uh, giving wide berth uh, to the winter keep. Uh, here, uh, the mountains give way uh, to plains similar uh, to your nomadic uh, homeland. Uh, and you can spy the first of like the trees not so badly affected by the harsh climbs uh, of the glitter spire peaks uh, that you kind of traversed around. Uh, and even some uh, more like active signs of life. The hunting and fare here is better. You don't starve as you did uh, in the mountains or in your, as in your first week. Uh, in the endless plains and by hook uh, and uh, arrow and snare and keep yourself uh, going uh, till the mountains uh, are well at your back uh, and that fell place uh, behind you 
the Winterspire River like cuts the land in half here at the base of these mountains and like cuts down south uh, uh, into like the far eastern part uh, of the endless uh, plains. And it's here uh, in these rolling uh, grassy uh, windswept hills uh, that you come across the greatest kind of hoard of uh, food and life uh, that you'd spied uh, since setting off east into the mountains. There's 12 goats uh, braying to each other on this like windswept hill. There's like a copse of dead trees. Uh, two men, one's mounted, the other has a horse uh, nearby talk uh, amongst each other, their voices carried on the wind, uh, as well as the bleats uh, of the goats. You see no other, like you've seen signs of life and passage of people about here. They know other humans themselves. And by this distance, they appear toy gun to you with their curved caps and the breed of horse uh, that they sport. Though they're strange that these two are out here by themselves, uh, so far from claimed lands. Chulun's stomach uh, rumbles loudly. So does Kadans. Kadans follows him. Honestly, we had rabbit yesterday. You can't be that hungry. My, I have a small rabbit stomach, but a big goat stomach. Perhaps we can ask for a goat? Would you just give a goat away? We have to we take it. demand one as tribute. I don't wish to be a thief, Chulun. If, if we demand, it's not a thief to, to we are Khans. If it's a raid, then it's not stealing. Conquest. Aye. Tanaka. What respect would they have for us if we came in begging? Julian's not wrong. Perhaps they might be allies of ours. What allies do you think we have? We can make new ones. Raiding won't do that. I have no respect for people who do not raid. Yeah, me either. And he'll thump his chest. Tanaka is the boss. He decides, we want to talk to them, we want to steal them, we want to raid them. One goat, one boom missed. Who's going? I'm not much for talking. Well, if we're going to steal it, the least we could do is without a fight. Surely we don't all need to go for one goat. No, you you speak sense, Salai. Let's go for four. Uh, you could not eat an entire goat yourself without your stomach exploding. Well, we can take them with us. And then we won't have to f hold all twelve. Let's take all twelve and start a new clan. Maybe we can make these men. Uh, Our oh, men. Yes. Denaka's men. Eagle clan. There's already an eagle clan, and it's not us. We got those feathers, though, and the bird. But we don't have the bird anymore. 
for now. Fine, do we go now or do we wait till dark? They're on horseback. We won't be able to catch them if we chase them on foot. We should take the horses. I'm so tired of walking. It would be nice to ride a horse again. But one of them is mounted already. You know me, I'm good at sneaking. If I sneak in and grab the horses, then you can negotiate with the men. If you wait for them to um, settle down for the night, I'll sneak in and try and try and uh, try and get the horses. I mean, I've got the horses. You can deal with the men. We have the element of surprise. They they don't know we're here. They will go about their their business, and we can follow them. They'll be in no hurry. And when night falls, and we're obscured, horses, goats. We can take them. Do they have any dogs with them? Nope. And even as you observe them, they only allow the goats to graze here for like some moments before like driving them on. Even though like you would imagine there still could be feed uh, found amongst like the light snow uh, on that hillock that they were at. What time of day is it? How long till you dark? guys could spy them before not before noon, and if you do as Tanaka says, follow them. They will not stop until like on the edge of dusk, where they'll find like a ridge to shelter from the northern wind. Uh, mm. Man and horse and go to light kind of nestled in. I will do as you say. Wait, what if, what if they're a very powerful clan? And? I thought you said we were a powerful clan. Well, we are. You know, like, thump his chest again, but there's only four of us. Uh -huh. No, every powerful clan needs powerful enemies. Chulun, like you can see him doing the math in his head, like trying to figure that out, and then he'll like nod, like that sounds correct. But they could always come after us for eating them. They will come after us. That is the way of things. But we must not let them catch us. Then we'd better not take 12 goats. Goats are nimble. They won't. Goats can climb. Two goats, one for each horse. Two of us will have to run. Two of us will take the horses. Two of us will split off, remain unseen, and we will meet up. The two that remain behind on foot will be the, the eyes and ears to see who is coming, if anybody. Chulun will nod, like, that sounds wise, but he'll also kind of, like, sigh, realizing that he's faster, so he's not going to get a horse. Can 
kind of frowns considering your plan, but he accepts it because you're the elder. So the four of you split off into pairs under cover of darkness and approach the hillock uh, where like the goats uh, every so often like bleed out to one another and mostly like quiet and uh, try and find sleep uh, as do like the, the men uh, and horses. The one uh, always kind of remains awake, poking the fire cloak up above him, uh, watching, guarding the herd, no doubt, uh, while the other farts and snores. Karan is sneaking up on the horses. He's picked some peach up to see if any of them, either of the horses, react to um, to this goodie out on the plains. And okay, he'll... can I get a stealth check and an animal handling check from you, sir? Mm -hmm. Stealth 12, animal handling 11. So uh, the man hears your passage, like twigs uh, uh, breaking or leaves rustling underfoot and the horses winnick as you go close, close to them, even as you like offer grass. And the man like stands up for like grab a branch from the fire and hold it aloft and give like a grunt as he like stomps, but down on his sleeping companion's foot. Who's out there? And like say, saying it loud enough for you to hear, as well as his companion, who like scurries out of his hides and begins like produces like a bow and begins to, uh, attempting to string it. Um, Kadan, I say, walking into the light. Show me the palms of your hands, thief. He holds up his hands. Trying to steal our horses. No, no, I didn't see the horses. I was just approaching. Roll deception with disadvantage. Five. Liar, uh, says the man who hasn't spoken yet, and he'll finish stringing his bow and, like, pull for an arrow. I should feather him, no guy, and be done with it. He's obviously an urchin or thief. Look at him. And then there's no. a... No! Uh, I turn and run in the direction that I think um, Tanaka and, um, and Chulun and Sarnayai are. Okay, he throws the flaming oh. brand after you, uh, and I'll need a stealth check from you three guys as well. Done. Yeah, the man who threw the flaming brand like points over to where you're huddled down, Sano. There's another one. There's two of them. Uh, and it's roll initiative. Even <laughs> B. Wait, what happened? Katan started talking. <laughs> I was gone for two seconds. Katan started. Oh, it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the trouble with brothers, is you can't wrangle them. I'm really enjoying playing Kudo because he's kind of an idiot, and I generally play Intelligent. Megorian sort of like pragmatic people. I kind of like that Chilin's a bit dopey, you know? Yeah. Stubborn, <laughs> silent, and curiosity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the two the, between Kadan and Chilun were just. <sighs> it's impossible <laughs> really to keep nice all to, three brothers alive. It would be nice to voice all the decisions on checks for a change. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, my my migraine, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so
Sorry, Chex, that's what brother. you get for accidentally being the oldest twin. Uh, I, I believe that that happened. Is it Chulon, you see the plan go downhill quickly? Uh, as Kardan is running towards you guys, uh, one of those men throws like a flaming branch aloft, like in the wake of Kardan, uh, semi like lighting up uh, the area. And it's obvious by his shout that he's spotted either. Um, oh, yeah, he, you know, he can see where he's pointing. He spotted Sanai as well, like creeping up in the darkness uh, as his companion like strings the bow. Um, you guys are, Kardan like came up close, but you guys are at least 60 feet back from the camp, which puts you 90 feet from these men whom you can see uh, by the firelight, uh, by dim firelight. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to break cover and go and batter some men, I think. Uh, is there a way for me to get to kind of behind them or in around behind them a little bit? Uh, what's the total movement you can make in a turn? Is it 80 feet? If I dash, yeah, 80. That would get you 10 feet away from the men uh, if you like, move directly towards them. So if you wanted to like circle around behind them, you'd have to use your full movement and action this turn and then your movement next turn to come up behind their camp down okay. over like the ridge that shelters them. Under the Chulin Spesh, uh, I'll dash up there and use a key point to bonus action to dodge. Rush up in their midst like, adjacent, uh, to, like 10 feet from them. Yeah, yep. By that firelight. Yep. There are three, he cries in alarm. Uh, Tanaka. I mean, what can I do? Um, <laughs> the one most aglow in the firelight would be my target. Um, Tanaka's going to take his bow and just launch an arrow. His hope is that, that they will... Uh, not see them and think there's a lot more. You'll have advantage on this attack because uh, you're hidden. Uh, good. Uh, no, it's not good. Uh, 15. 15 hits, punches through his studded hide armor. Uh, 7 damage. I mean, yeah, screams in pain and exclaims. So now they know there are four foes, at least. Uh, no guys have been gut shot uh, by an arrow. Hastily, like pulls forth like a brutal, like curved scimitar from his sash, uh, and will rush forward, closing the distance with you, Chulun, and gives two mighty slashes aimed at your midsection for disadvantage. Miss and a twenty to hit. Yep. Uh, even with disadvantage, so you'll take eight slashing damage. Uh, Maral uh, will like uh, pull back the arrow for his bow and fire into the back of Kadan as he runs, screaming for a 18 to hit. Yep. Five piercing damage. Uh, pain sears through your shoulder as an arrow bites in. Kadan, you're next to act. It nearly sends you like stumbling over into the grass. Um, at this, he turns, he turns whilst whilst he's running, and dashes back to fight beside Chulun's side, and he stabs out at the man with his antler hilted dagger, but only hits a swinging wild loot AC thirteen. Thirteen was it? That yep. misses. Yeah. He steps aside and like swats the uh, the clumsy strike wide. Bastard horse thief, you'll pay for that. Uh, Sana, you're next to act. Uh, so Kadan is, and Chaloon are both attacking the same guy? Yeah, the guy who, like, Tanaka shot in the belly. The other one behind him is, like, shooting uh, into the fray. Can I reach the shooter? No, you're 90 feet back, same as uh, Chulun and Tanaka. Okay. So it depends on your movement, but that's 90 feet distance between you and the fire and this melee. Uh, okay, well, I will move uh, 60 feet, my full movement ahead, but keep the fire between me and uh, the archer. Nice, good, cool. Okay, and then I'll go back to the top, Chulun. Okay, um, so I've kind of uh, taken that one hit um, 
on the forearm, and then I'm gonna uh, unload on this man and try and break his face. <laughs> First one's a 19 to hit, and uh, second one is a 16 to hit. I both hit. Wonderful. Give me 11 uh, from the two attacks. Poof, poof, poof. Uh, he'll just start yeah. swinging fists. You bust his face in, breaking his nose and shattering teeth. Uh, he's like coughing and spluttering as he tries uh, to like slash at you uselessly with the scimitar and he's bloodied. Okay, that's it for me. Tanaka. Uh, seeing the, the actor, he'll uh, adjust his aim towards him uh, and fire off a, an arrow. Okay. Uh, so fif 15 again. 15 hits punch through the man's uh, fur armor. Uh, and it will punch through for eight. Okay. Yeah, it wings him uh, through like the other uh, side of his arm, uh, and he like squints his eyes, but he's fire blind, like looking past like where Sane stands on the opposite side of the fire pit to where you are off in the darkness, and curses that uh, he can't see the source of uh, who would shot him, but notes that you're out there. Um, I imagine you're going to like stay in that same distance where you were, Tanaka. Since you have range, like range of yeah, it, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Uh, no guy will. I think, like, rather than like aimed accurate slashes across the midsection, he's just like you're over the top of him at the moment, Chulon pummeling down into him. So he's going to try and stab up with like the point of the scimitar, like like gut punching, uh, for a miss, and a miss. Uh, they're clumsy strikes because he's like in blind pain uh, from his ruined face. Um. And then uh, Maral. Maral will... Mm, can't shoot Sado, can't see Tanaka. He'll drop his bow uh, and reach to his pack uh, and pull out a curved scimitar and rush down and try and hack into you, Karan. Uh, actually, he'll lay about one at each of you, like first at Karan and then at um, Chulu and trying to like smash you guys off his companion. The one on uh, Karan is a 15 to hit. The one on Chulu is a yeah 19 on the die, so a definite hit. Yep. Six slashing uh, to you, Karan, and four slashing uh, to you, Chulun. Um, and it's Karan's turn, then Sanai. Karan concentrates his attack on the one that's injured. Hits an AC of 14. That hits, punches through his leather. It punches up through his leather for seven points of damage. He like spits uh, blood uh, or more blood than he was from his ruined face now and moans uh, at like the near mortal wound. Uh, he's very nearly slain, this man. And then I disengage and move 15 feet back into the... Yeah, I'm still in dim light. Dim light. Yeah. Uh, Sana, you're next. So can I reach Moral? You can, 30 foot of, away from him, 30 foot movement. Yeah. Uh, so Sarnai, seeing him strike out at both of her brothers who are there in front of them, uh, comes barreling around the fire, um, the blade in her hand uh, yelling in, uh, in her fury and her rage, but the, the sand near the fire is slick underfoot with blood and she slides slightly uh, and the swing goes wide but it leaves her open uh, attacks against me will have advantage okay uh, so back to the top Trillin. okay i'm gonna um swing out of this guy again uh, and try and put an end to him the guy first guy i'd hit um his nose i broke uh, it's 15 on the die, so 20 all up. That hits. Uh, this is a 13 on the die, so 18 all up. That hits. Uh, 11 damage again. From the two shots. That's uh, exactly what's needed. So imagine, like, the last uh, punch that comes out, like, smashes into his larynx and sends him reeling over backwards into the snow, like, choking on his broken throat. He begins to, like, spasm and will offer you no more challenge. Yeah, uh, he'll like uh, smash him and then turn to look at the other guy uh, who's here as well, slashing at him, um, uh, and give him a look of like, you don't have to do this. Tanaka, you see one of the men go down as your siblings descend on the remaining one. 
making a range shot dangerous. Yeah, he's not going to bother to make a, a range shot. Um, he's going to put the arrow that he had notched away, stand up and move out of the, the cover. Uh, he's not going to get there anyway, but he's just going to make his way uh, towards where the fight is happening. Okay, for movement and dash. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll say dash. That'll put you uh, 30 feet from the fire pit in the melee. Uh, next will be no guy. Uh, he chokes to death on the ground. Marel next to him will slash out uh, twice at you, Sane, with advantage for a hit and a hit. Oh. Five slashing and then four slashing. Whoosh, whoosh. Cuts through the third deal, uh, spilling your blood. Uh, by the firelight, uh, Marrow will stay right where he is, not wanting to provoke any other attacks. And seeing that he uh, yeah, can draw blood, maybe he can take one of you down. Uh, Karan, you're next to act. So Karan um, dashes forward to close on the one on Sarnay. And can he flank him? Certainly can. Yep, he'll come in behind and um, slide his dagger in a bit. Um, Behind his back, hitting AC 18. Yeah, that easily hits. These men only wear like leather and hide. For nine points damage. Nine. Yeah, he arcs back, screaming in pain as your uh, antler um, dagger jars off bone, pillaging his flesh. Uh, but doesn't fell him. Uh, Sana, you're next to act. Uh, as he arcs backward, uh Sarnai sees her opening and crits him. Um, that's <laughs> What's the damage? Ten, it's 10 damage. Rolled pretty low. Um, He's very badly bloodied. Uh, D10, please. Yeah. Three. D20. Five. Five. <laughs> uh, yeah, so as you like slash out wildly from the pain, he like brings his uh, left forearm up in a like defensive kind of like instinctive kind of pose and you just sever uh, the arm at the left elbow and it like flies down into the, uh, the snow and the man screams all the more. I think Sonai screams too at the shock of it. Chulun. Uh, is he still a threat, that guy? Oh, I'm going to make him make a morale check. Uh, no, he fails. He drops his blade and just clutches the ruined stump, dropping to his knees, expecting death as his blood spurts out hot crimson across the snow uh, near where his companion lays, just like giving a gut-curdling scream uh, to make like the goats bleeding <laughs> sound blissful. Oh, man. Okay. Uh I don't know if Chulun wants to like murder this guy uh, when he's helpless. Um, so we might just try and knock him out. Uh, yeah, we'll just kick him in the head, uh, I guess, to make him stop screaming because it's like making him very uncomfortable. <laughs> Pace back and forth for eventually just like fly kicking him to the head and like, knock him unconscious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, he stops screaming and just like lays in a widening pool of blood, ululating from his stump. Somebody get the goats. You know, they've scattered from the uh, scent of blood from the uh, strangers and the violence, but uh, they're herd animals, so once you grab a couple, uh, it's easier to grab more and so on until they're all kind of sheltering together nearby the familiar scents of man, smoke, and horse. I didn't mean to. And they would have killed you. I didn't kill him, though. I... Oh. I didn't mean to. If you didn't do that, then, well, they could have done it to you. Uh. 
Are we just going to leave him? Um, he's like looking around uh, unsure. I guess the guy's probably dead at this stage. Um, he's not really sure what to do. Uh, so he'll just uh, try and search him for if he has anything that like marks him as a certain kind of tribesman or something like that. Um, like unable to answer the question. The man will bleed out uh, from his arm and be dead by the time you've picked his corpse clean. You can like steal uh, from this scene, uh, from like the the bodies and, and things about here. Two scimitars, two studded leather armor, two horses with saddles, thirteen pounds of mutton, two bags of black arak, uh, twelve goats, one longbow with eleven good arrows, two daggers, uh, as well as like bed rolls, uh, small like foodstuffs, water bladders, needful things like that that people living living at rough would uh, would possess. Treasure to you, uh, windswept orphans. Yeah, Chulun will take one of the scimitars and think uh, that he's uh, a great Khan. Oh, I just saw that Kaius had done a 19 medicine check uh, in the chat. Sorry. So I'll retrospectively say that uh, his stump is like tourniqueted. Uh, and you've like cared for the other wounds as best you can, such that like it, it's almost certain the man will die, but he's not died yet. We need to ask him questions. Can we have him as one of our herders? I guess Julian would like look at the state of the uh, wound and probably think it seems unlikely. And they were soft. The tiger would not have fallen so easily. No, I've taken voice and I'm still here. We need to recruit strong men to join our tribes, not weaklings. And we have horses now and food and weapons. We'll have to go somewhere to keep the goats grazing where we can't be found by their clan. Oh, groans the man with like the tourniquet stump. Mercy. Or oh, Arak. Give him some. He'll guzzle uh, and like cough and chortle and like spit the uh, like the black Arak out. You can see it like like frothing up black and pink out of like the wounds in his chest and like causing him to like wetly wheeze, but he smiles and thanks you, even though it would like discomforts him further. What? what? You go. I right, probably had the same idea. What tribe are you? He shakes his head, like coughing. You're not sure if they're like tears of like physical or mental pain or maybe both, but they come now and he coughs and sputters, blood-soaked mouth. <laughs> None now. 
We went to join the new wolf. We were snow cats, Dalai, but they've grown weak. <laughs> no guy and I took some of the herd while they were sleeping, intending to offer as tribute that the wolf might take us in and add to his conard. We had heard he was here in the northeast. <laughs> The new wolf, Cockto. He nods. You've heard of him? Yes. Kill me. Wolf will take no cripple, and I'm a thief to the Dalai. Why are the Dalai weak? <laughs> a boy, no older than you, rules them. Too young, he says. No fierceness. The other tribes raid us at will, with impunity. I wish to serve the wolf. They say that he is strong. <laughs> they say he killed your guy. He did <laughs> not. Are we not fierce? Yeah. Four thieves in the night. <laughs> He did not kill Yargai. Lies. That is word on the gold way. He shrugs as if it's not his fault, if it's not true or not. Sarnai looks over to her brothers. He reaches up with like a blood-soaked good arm, uh, reaching for whoever holds the skin of Arag, who like given him some before. You're a poor dog eyeing the antelope. This is too good drink for you. Curse you, boy, he says to like brown teeth. He'll just, like, nurse his stump into his belly, like, rubbing at his phantom hand, moaning and whimpering. Has he lost his weapon hand or, or the other hand? Nope, it was his left hand at the elbow. We should kill him. Send him, send him back to, um, send him back to the wolves and tell him that the, that the children of Yargai still live. <laughs> he says, they say they turned into wolves and ripped their mother limb from limb. Mm. I don't um, see wolves, just thieves, children. Kill me. Kadan goes and finds the, the other bit of his arm that's, um, that was chopped off and starts roasting it on the fire. He like screams maniacally as he sees his like parted flesh like burn before him. It's maddening to him. 
Uh, but he's so weak from blood loss and wounds that like as he tries to get up to go and like stop you, he like stumbles down piteously. Mm, smells good this meat. Enough Full of fat. Enough. Uh, Jordan's going to walk behind the guy and like place his knee in like the middle of his back and put a hand on his shoulder uh, with the intent of like killing him uh, if nobody has any problems with it. There's a and then and the man like spasms his bowels loose and he like unfolds broken before you usually let him go after ending his pity. Uh, his pity estate. We'll just let the man's uh, body like hit the ground uh, and then he'll like drag it away from where they're camping um, and see if he can find a tree or something to put it in. Yeah, you can hang Marel and a uh, guy up in uh, a tree a couple of like foothills over, return back uh, to the solemn camp, easy to find by the firelight. The goats like part and like bleed amongst each other as they move. Uh, when you come to back to your siblings, where they quickly form up again closer to the fire and the safety of, of you guys, despite the tang of blood in the air. Fire spits a hidden vein of sap and sends some sparks off into the air. It's closer to midnight by now. Well, we have goats. Now what? Where to? We need to raid more goats, get more goats, so we can not just feed ourselves, but feed. Feed a tribe. We need to set up our own tribe. And then raid. Raid the soft, soft tribes and then raid the stronger tribes until we're the strongest tribe on the, on the plains. First we need to figure out these lands. Know where we are. No. Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? No landmarks. To be able to use them. Depends on where to, to at least take shelter. We can have a, a feast for tonight. And we we finally do not have to hear the belly rumbles. Good plan. So you eat like kings. You roast the finest goats uh, over hot flames, fed with dead trees that stood witness uh, to the slaughter of Nogai and Marel. And you eat uh, until you like vomit, uh, sick with the rich uh, fatty meat only to wolf down like more of the choicest morsels. And as you say, like here, uh, not one uh, belly grumbling. Uh, and you guys like, like a greasy chin and hand uh, and full the fire, like still uh, smoldering up uh, over like the blackened carcass uh, of the goat that fed you uh, when morning comes. Can I make a, con can everyone get a, I get, can I get a con save from everyone please?
cut on. You're the first to answer nature's call uh, the next morning. Uh, you move up uh, away from the camp past the pleasant smells of like smoke, fire smoke and the roasted goat. You can hear like the winnicking of the horses and they're like the ever like bleeding of one another of the goats to each other as you unleash your stream and your eyes are just like blinking to the morning light. You can see three men uh, sitting straight backed in saddles on their horses. As they like pluck and nuzzle at the snow trying to unearth some uh, grass uh, or forage beneath. They watch you quizzically. Rai smiles uh, through the mustachioed, uh, dry, uh, darkened lips. Um, how far away are they? 60, 70 feet from your camp, as if they've been like standing there, like plotted forward quietly on the horses. Looking back, you can see your siblings, like arms crossed over their bellies in their furs, smiling even in their si sleep after such a feast last night. Uh, um, my mother always said we should eat the lungs first and save the fatted meat for later. He said, he says to them, good morning. One of the men chuckles uh, at that. The other two don't share in the mirth. And one of those silent ones says to the other, we've found our gold thieves. Uh, and that's where we'll leave uh, this session. Uh, Oof. Thanks for playing, guys. Uh, well Thank played. And yeah, look forward to next time. I think uh, we'll finish it up now. Yeah, thanks for watching if you did.